do this. There you go. That meeting is all yours. Have a good meeting. You have a great one. Have a nice Thanksgiving. Okay. Hello. Good evening. Welcome to the November 21st, 21st meeting of the Central Conservation Commission. Um, I have just a couple quick things to read. Um, this, uh, the Town of Situate Mass Commitment Statement to Diversity, equal, Equity, and Inclusion. Um, the Situate Conservation Commission is committed to providing an environment of respect during our meetings. We ask that all members to interact in a polite manner, even when there is a disagreement. We value the participation of our community and want all participants, including marginalized, minoritized communities, to feel welcome and respected. And we ask our committee members and all who participate to commit to these standards and support and respect our community. And then this meeting is being held remotely as an alternate means of public access pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, temporarily amending certain provisions of the open meeting law. You are hereby advised that this meeting and all communications during this meeting may be recorded by the Town of Situate in accordance with the open meeting law. So all that said, we have members tonight, Richard Harding, Penny Scott Pipes, and Brendan Collins, and myself, Frank Snow. So does anybody have any additions or changes to our agenda this evening? Frank, the only thing I would add is we ought to try to figure out when we're going to be able to meet in Hummerock for the number of things that are going on down here. That's a good idea. We can take that up at the end of the meeting. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, and maybe we're trying to figure out a workshop night too. So yep. see how much time we have. Other than that, I can't think of anything. Anybody else, Penny? No, or, uh... I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, I had put out there that tree policy and I also had distributed the beach policy for Hummerock. So we have those floating out there, but um, there's only four of us, Amy. Yeah, we don't have well, everybody on, so well, I mean, let's, not let's, tonight. Yeah, we can at least see where we're at with that if we need to get any other info. Um, okay. So that oh. said, um, can I get a motion to accept the agenda with those changes? I make a motion we accept the agenda with the changes mentioned. And I second. I second that. Second from Brendan. All in favor, Richard? Yes. And Frank, yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. Number one, Tilden Ave. Let's continue here. Yeah. Um, so it's for Tilden Go Ave, ahead. that that one it was continued for waiting for um, Board of Health approval, which which did get received last uh, week. Mm -hmm. And we did receive a revised plan. I think they had um, just a notation was added to it. So I think you're ready to close on that one, Frank. Okay. I'll um, make a motion to okay. close. Any, 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 just before that, any, anybody okay. else? Um, any other questions, thoughts, or comments? Do we have anybody in the audience on this one? Seeing that. Okay. All right. So Penny's made a motion to close. I'll second. Uh, actually, Bill Graham's got a hand up. Oh, okay. We, um... Can we let Bill in? Hello. Hi, Bill. Hi. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Um, I'm opposed to the plan as it's been submitted. Okay. The tight, tank, the tight tanks were reviewed by the Board of Health, but they only amount to 25% of the state minimum standard of 2,000 gallons. On the plan, there's no separation between the buildings for the septic pipe to run down the side. There's no retaining wall or nothing to protect the other house uh, from a possible failure of this, the uh, septic tank running down. Uh, I have a question on the installation of the tanks, and this I think would be in your, your area. The tanks are 48 inches wide. The space in front of the building is 48 inches. To dig the area, you're going to have to dig a trench of at least 10 feet long. 
and approximately five to six feet deep. Where does the fill go? The equipment is gonna be blocking the road. Is there gonna be a police detail required? Because there's 14 homes that use this road and we need to get by um, at all times. Is a trench box gonna be required for the dig? Um, the tanks need to have flow protection, uh, such as a weighted base, so that they don't float up when we get the, uh, the high tides and the uh, violent uh, flooding that we get down here. At the Board of Health meeting, uh, they said that this would be a seasonal property only and it would be deed restricted. How is this enforced? Who enforces it? Um, are there building requirements uh, for the safety operation of the vehicle, of, of the, the home, such as exits and smoke detectors? I'm at a loss to figure out how to proceed with this. It doesn't seem like there's any protection for the residents down here. This go, goes from committee to committee, the conservation, the board of health, and I don't know where the building inspector comes in, but this whole, this whole project stinks. Um, and nobody seems to have responsibility for the total project. Bill, Bill I, I just, Bill, Bill, you've made yeah. a lot of statements, but what, what, I'm, I guess your question is, um, and I'm going to try to address, the, there's a number of things that you remarked on that are not the purview of the Conservation Commission. Okay. And it, and it is a series of, of commissions or boards that, that do look at this. The building department obviously has purview, the fire department will have theirs for, for smoke and whatnot. The, the Conservation Commission doesn't deal with those issues. I no, think, no. You, I think well, well, if you do, then I don't understand why it's being brought up. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm asking reading. the question is, and excuse me for interrupting you. I'm asking the question is, this whole project needs to be, re be reviewed, not in separate incidents, but as a total project. Um, this is this is a very poor design with 25% capacity of the state standard for the septic system. But 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 uh, that's the board. But that's the board of health and the and and it's not a purview for the commission. We may not like that or or, or whatever, but we don't have a. That's not our purview. Our purview is it is the excavation work. So you have a couple of points I think that are reasonable to ask. What's going to happen with the material? Um, we'd prefer to have any natural material not leave that area. I, I don't know whether there's a place with a town property or whatever that that material can be placed on. That certainly we can certainly write into the orders um, that that it not leave that site. We often often do that. So I'm trying to get to the points that you had that pertain to the Conservation Commission. Okay. All right. So you've you've read off a lot of them, and I'm not sure I recall all of them. But well, how about so how so, about so so when we when we look at this, when we close this, we write a set of orders. Yeah. And we can deny the project, or we can condition the project with with orders that we think are pertinent to this project. So, um, okay. typically we would look for some erosion control, but this looks like it's a one day job, or two day job. So, it's kind of really not not very practical to have erosion control on, on this particular site your your question about working in the roadway um is something that um is that a private way yes it is all right so so i think that each one of the abutters has to as as owners of that road it's it's need to either notify or or whatever or be notified as to what's going to happen there and if they start to do that without your your notification i think you have legitimate right to contact police or whatever and say hey we, we don't know what they're doing here we can't get out so that's on that's on the responsibility of the person doing that project to work that out um okay what about, what about a retaining wall of some sort to protect the house next to it from possible uh, failure of this um, septic pipe that is going to run within maybe 20 inches of their home. I, I would think they would they'd do better if they were 
clipping or attaching that pipe to the side of the how the foundation or however they're going to secure it. I mean, usually when we see these on piles, they have to secure that pipe to the piling and they usually put it on the side that's least exposed to the weather, but not we're not going to condition a retaining wall in that area. We're trying to get them out of there. Well, the house down in back uh, mm. that just got approved, number 141, uh, Tilden, um, you did require, or somebody required a retaining wall between that and the, the adjacent house. Um, I think they had to do some sort of retaining wall to hold back things for the septic system. Okay. If I remember that one right. Okay. Um, does this, before construction starts, does this get reviewed by the building department? I don't know what's required of the building. I, you know, we didn't look at the building to see what's needed. If, if a building permit is required for remodeling inside the house, I have no idea of the condition of the house. If, if they're planning on doing work to it, you know, either structural or a significant amount of work, um, replacing windows, doors, that kind of thing, I would think that they need to contact the building department. Okay. Because uh, the house is has little value. I think it's fifty-four thousand dollars for the house on the town assessment. If they exceed the twenty-five, the fifty percent, it would require elevation. Yeah, but it's not based on the assessment. It's based on the value of a structure today. I've had multiple discussions with the building department about that, and and maybe they'll trigger that if they come into the building department. And it might be something you want to discuss with the building department and say, hey, we're well aware that this place needs X number of work. And we don't think they can do that um, for that value and, and, and let them know your concerns for that. But, okay. but, that but, but they are looking differently at the value of the structures today, given the costs yeah. that we're, everyone's facing. How, do, how does the, my last question, and I'll let you go. Yep. How does the seasonal restriction apply to the house and who enforces it? We don't have anything in our orders about a seasonal house. Um, it was committed to at the uh, Board of Health meeting that it would be a seasonal residence, and it was agreed to by um, Morse Engineering. Amy, um, is that something that the board, of, are you aware of with Board of Health or? I don't know that that's no. anything that could go in. If that's something that was agreed to with the Board of Health, then it would be something that would be in their permit. Okay, and who who would enforce it? Because uh, I mean, Board it just. Uh, um, I, I guess the Board of Health bill. I, I don't know how they. Okay, I'm just at a loss on the procedure and I'm just asking questions. I don't mean to give you a hard time. No, no, when I. I understand your concerns. It's a difficult spot. We're trying to deal with the purview that we have. I can also tell you that the state, uh, other agencies are not going to take people's property away from them if there's a if there's a means or method that they can use the house. So I, I get it that there's lots of issues with this property. We're going to try to deal with the issues that pertains to conservation, but quite honestly, we don't you know, we don't want to see raw sewage running anywhere. So if it has to be a tight tank so that someone can continue to use it, I, I don't see how we could deny that unless unless there are other circumstances, but it's pretty straightforward. What yeah. The only problem, the, excuse me, Frank, the only yep. problem with the tight tank is in this, the capacity that they are listed is two 600 gallon tanks, which probably have a, a working capacity of 500 gallons. Um, that is less than 10 days of usage for a single person. A couple would, would be five days and it would have to be pumped out. This is <clears throat> not a good situation. I, I, I understand what you're saying. I, you know, it's too bad they're not addressing this in a different fashion. You know, maybe someone will have the sense to look at this and say, you know, this house needs to be elevated and then something different could be done. I, 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 it's not our purview to tell them what to do with the house. Unfortunately. I understand that. 
at the meeting, Morse Engineering said that, yes, something else could be done. It could be elevated and a proper system could be put underneath the house. So, right. I mean, that's a possibility. I know there's an expense to it, but it's, it's a possibility. Um, you know, this applicant is choosing to have a tight tank and, and have the house used intermittently. Yeah. Um, okay, I guess I can't say anything more. Well, we, we have your concerns. I think, um, you know, in the orders, we can certainly address the, 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 the removal of fill and we'll see what we can put in the orders to address um, the roadway. Okay. Um, all right, so that that remains usable or they work out a amicable um, concern can be can be put into our orders. Okay, thank you. All for right, but I, I do think I do think it would be to your benefit to at least you know alert the the building department to your concerns with that structure and how much is going on there. I I, I don't know what else to. Okay, to thank tell you. you. Yeah, thank you. A, a, oh, the other one, Amy. Is it possible for us to put in the orders that that pipe be secured to the building? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> so at least um, we they can ma make sure that that is attached in some fashion, either clips or whatever, into the foundation. Um, if there's if there's a way to to do that, but I appreciate your your concerns as well. Thank you. Thank you. Did I see a couple other? Um... Deborah has her hand up. Deborah's on. Yeah, and you want to state your name and address, please? We have Deborah. She's, She's still muted. Did that unmute it? Yes. Okay. My name is George Richardson. I go by Dennis. Deborah's account is what's got us on Facebook. I am totally illiterate with the uh, computer and iPad. However, I am quite uh, educated in the situation of dealing with remodeling uh, houses, especially here along the coast. Uh, I was, my first concern as an abutter is the fact that I do not understand your terminology in, re, in, re, in regarding this as a septic system repair. There is nothing on that property that is worth repairing. It is a total re-piping from the septic system through the roof. The, uh, you don't seem to have addressed that whatsoever in regards to the fact that uh, I, I thought that there was a difference between uh, in terminology between being a repair and a total uh, replacement. So I'm sorry, and your last name again is please? Richardson. Mr. Richard, so, so Mr. Richardson, the issue of dealing with a septic system is an issue for the Board of Health. The Conservation Commission and, and the, the Board of Health can address this in the fashion that they seem as appropriate. In most cases, if there's been something before, they call it a repair. Okay. That, but if that's that. That's that. But but it has nothing to that. That's not pertinent to the conservation commission. Well, I thought that by you actually digging in this wetlands area here, which is subject to uh, constant erosion due to the the ocean coming onto this property more than once every year that it would be taken under more consideration by your, your organization in regards to the fact that you keep mentioning that there's a foundation the pilings that are supporting that structure were pro probably put in in 1900 or somewhere in the early 1900s structurally uh, nobody has seemed to have taken into consideration that nobody's even looked underneath the property to see if there's even any structural strength left there that is going to be affected when they dig the hole for a hole bigger, big enough and necessary to support your tight tanks that are proposed. 
the I, I'm not sure why things would be dug up annually or or, or frequently. Are they going to excavate and put in a site a, a tight tank, and that's going to have some lids on it. And when it gets pumped out, the the pumper takes those lids off, pumps it, and puts it back. So I'm not sure why they would be digging more than once to put this tank in. And as far as the structural integrity of the house, again, this that's not the purview of the Conservation Commission. It's, it's a building department would would look at that structure and deem it either um, okay or, or or condemn it. That's how, that that would be up to the building inspector. Once once the excavation is made in front of this property, I don't believe that the front of this property is going to be able to uh, be put back together tight enough to withstand the wave action that actually comes up against it yearly, which I have observed for the past 40 years in person on site with my feet in the water from the ocean coming over my knees uh, right at the corner of this property. Uh, again, that's the, the it'll be the building commission to decide the integrity of the building can you guarantee the the integrity of the of the soil being washed away from this which it happens periodically and doesn't move into the marsh which you consider as a protected uh area of uh that's at the end of this street or this can, uh private way can can you re can you phrase that question so I could answer it? Um, how can you ensure that this excavation will not be um, affected by uh, the, the actual uh, earth that's been packed in here for the past hundred years? Uh, unfortunately, in order to do work in there, whether you're replacing a water line or, or septic or whatever, they have to do some excavation and then they're going to backfill around it and it and it's no different than any other repair that goes up and down that road. It, the scouring or whatever that take effect there um, depends on the storm. I think if you've lived there all that time, you're well aware of that. There'll be years when there won't be any issue and there'll be times when that's when that's possible. But I mean, what would happen if the water line broke in front of your house and they had to dig it up to fix it? Exactly. And that's what I'm saying is by moving earth at this particular time is going to affect a brand new six inch water main that the town put in in the last uh, five years. There's been no provisions of, or, or of anything even mentioned about the distance from uh, this uh, water main to where these tight tanks are which was a, a requirement on other properties on this private way. Uh, no one seems to address the issue that uh, the distance of these tanks being in front of the property is uh, extremely close to the main water service. I'm trying to read the map, uh, the print uh, plan here that's in front of it. And I'm not sure I agree with the measurements from uh, where it shows the line at Tilden Avenue on your print to the tanks, as far as the distance from the, uh, the six inch water main that exists there. And uh, whether or not by disrupting the road there that- uh, is, is the water line uh, um, owned by the town? <laughs> That's a good question. All right, well, but, but okay, so this is a conservation hearing. We're not here to talk about who owns water lines or, or, or whatever. If the town installed that water line and it's the town's, the town's going to look after its interest with the water line. If it's owned by the neighbors, then they're going to have to look out for their interest in that. We can, we can condition some pieces to make sure that this is safe. That's, that's what we're trying to do. So if we could keep the questions and, and just make it a question. Okay, and if you my, have your question, Bill just had some questions. We try to answer his questions. My, my question is, it apparently in front of the uh, tanks in 
on actual Tilden uh, Avenue property on the distance from the front of the house out to where the contractor has suggested putting in, I believe there, uh, there's a uh, protective po post to prevent anybody from driving over the coal, the, uh, the covers or the tanks themselves when coming down this street, that when they put these uh, posts. posts in, in front of it, posts have a tendency to, uh, just like around the telephone poles that are at the corner of this, this street and almost all up and down glades, that every time the ocean comes over, it washes out uh, more and more of the soil surrounding these posts, which means that the- uh, Do you have a question? The question is, are you going to do anything about the posts that are there and determine a size to uh, find out whether or not a retaining wall may be necessary to prevent this earth? The, to, from the, the, commission, the commission is not going to encourage or uh, installation of a retaining wall. There's ballards there to keep vehicles from, from driving over the, over the tight tanks. And what I'm seeing on a plan is a gas line that's out in the road. Whoever is installing this, is needs to be licensed as a as a Title V installer, and they need to be able to obtain a permit to be able to do that, so that they they should be aware of their responsibility in installing those in installing this equipment. Just let it go, Jennifer. No matter what you ask, they're just going to say it's not my job. Thank you for your time. Thank you. We have someone else with a hand up. Oh, that's the owner. That's near. He's the owner. Okay, can we? Yeah, it's uh, near. I'm going to unmute near. Hi, guys. How are you? Good evening. And could you state your name and address, please, sir? Yes, good evening, everybody. My name is Near. It's spelled N-I-R. And my last name is Drory, spelled D-R-O-R-Y. Thank you. I just want to say a couple of words to uh, all the neighbors. I'm not even sure what everyone is upset about. Uh, I purchased this property from the uh, town. And all my intention is, is really to put the uh, tight tanks in to make it into a livable uh, space. Uh, if I do any type of work in the future, obviously I'm going to get the uh, right permits from the uh, town and I'm not planning to do more than 50% of the house, of the work uh, to trigger any type of uh, uh, new zoning bylaws issues. Um, I'm definitely going to comply with all the rules and regulations and, and all the neighbors, I hope you were listening. When we do that work, we're going to make sure everyone have access to go in and out. Um, I spoke to a couple of contractors. I showed them the plan. Everyone think it's a one-day job. They'll be in and out of there in no time. And this is really not a big scope of work. This is just a one-day in and out, and, and everything would stay the same. I'm not planning to change anything, uh, really, just to install the tanks and, and be out of there. So if anybody have any, if you guys have any questions for me, please ask me, but really, I'm just trying to get the tight tanks uh, installed and that's all. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, thank you. So I guess now that we have the owner on, does anybody, um, any commission, commission members have any questions? Uh, Frank, it's Richard. Um, I yeah. just wondered if if uh, he had any, if it had been discussed with the Board of Health or anything about the amount of time you expect to use the house. Is it going to be a seasonal sort of operation? Can you answer that, please? Can you guys hear me? Yes, we yeah. can. Okay. So I uh, I spoke to uh, Morse Engineering and they they did inform me that uh, the Board of Health uh, put a condition for a seasonal use on the property. Um, I actually I missed the Board of Health uh, meeting, but uh, yeah, they did inform me that. And you're okay with that? Is that correct? 
you know, <laughs> I'm not really okay with that, but, uh, you know, uh, I guess uh, I'm not really okay with that. I mean, I don't see the reason why it should be restricted. Then the second question would be, uh, uh, how often can, do you plan or do you think you will be needing to uh, empty those tanks? You know, I, I, I did spoke to a, a company that does the service on them, and it's just going to be on a service plan. So it's get, it get monitored, and then every time it needs to be done, they'll come and do it. I mean, I'll have a service plan with them, and they'll do it as needed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Penny or, or Brandon. Brandon. No, nope, I'm I'm all set. I'm ready to close. I'm all set as well. I guess um, in the comments I would have, if if you're not a, if you're not okay with the Board of Health um, conditions, then you have to appeal those or accept them. Yeah, no, I understand. I do understand. So in, ex in, in not appealing him, you're accepting. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, and I think that the, the, the about is around, you have legitimate concerns about how this is going to operate and, and get done. Obviously, their homes are all around it. So you can understand there. Uh, absolutely. I understand the concern, but I am, but I'm willing to promise everyone that we'll get it done uh, in a timely manner, and we'll be in and out of there in no time, and, the, and, and I'll make sure that the job gets done correctly. Okay. Um. Can I close this, please? Um, well, I'm just, is there any other concerns that we think need to be added to our orders? <clears throat> We've discussed the material, the pipe, the tank, the bollards, work on the street. Well, I think some of the excavation is, as, as long as they're, I mean, it's a tricky spot. If it's not done correctly, it could make a real mess of that area. So if there's anything that, well, Amy and I could talk about that or, or whatever. Um, is was there any consideration as to the time that this should be done? No. Not when there's a storm going on. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. I think we've addressed enough of it. Um, any, we all said anybody else? Amy motioned, I seconded. So Pe Penny motion? I, I'm sorry, Penny motioned, I seconded. To close it, Richard second, all in favor? Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, Pinebrook. Number six, Pinebrook. And they've requested to be continued. Did they give a time? Oh. We're going to go to the next meeting, please. 12 5. Is that? 12 5, yes. I make a motion we continue six Pine Brook to December 5th. Second. Second from Richard. All in favor, Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Okay. 54 Oceanside. I got to open this one. On, 11, on uh, November 21st, 2022, at the 6 p.m. meeting of the Central Conservation Commission, we'll hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws. In section 30700, Town of Citra Code of Bylaws, we got the application of Dean Blodgett for work related to elevating a single family mm -hmm. dwelling at location at 54 Oceanside Drive, Situate. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the virtual meetings available on the agenda posts on the town website. Frank, I have Rick from Stenbeck and Taylor on the line here. Oh, good. Okay. Hi, everybody. This is Rick Savant from Steinbeck and Taylor. How are you hey, tonight? Rick. Good. How are you, Rick? Excellent. Um, so, yes, we have a... Uh, okay, so that plan, that's the existing house. Um, 
So at any rate, we have an existing single family house that, this, that the Blodgetts recently purchased at 54 Oceanside, right on the seawall, right about opposite 10th Ave, roughly. Um, what they're proposing to do is uh, to apply for a FEMA grant and elevate the structure to make it flood compliant. Uh, they're proposing to elevate the structure. Currently, it just sits on the ground on a concrete foundation. They're proposing to elevate it up onto concrete piers. Um, they have no way to move the house out of, you know, on the lot to the drive wood pile. So piers is the direction that uh, the structural engineer has, has uh, sent them and has done a design on a concrete pier layout. Uh, they're in a velocity zone. The house is in a velocity zone currently. Uh, it's a VE 18 zone. They're proposing to lift the house three and a half feet above that base flood elevation of 18, which is uh, in accordance with the FEMA grant would like them to go a minimum of three feet. So they're going an extra half a foot just to be safe. Um, there, it, it, the existing house is going to just be lifted straight up. Uh, they are proposing some small additions, mainly a deck on the rear of the house. Uh, there's a ground level deck there now uh, that's all going to be demoed. There's a large concrete patio between the house and the seawall that's all going to be demoed. Uh, and removed and left as an imper as a pervious surface, stone or otherwise. Uh, but currently there's a lot of concrete that's going to be removed there. Uh, but on the house itself, they are proposing a rear deck. Good work. Uh, as shown on the plan there, which will be elevated. The house is going to be about seven, seven to eight feet off the ground. So there is a deck to the rear and then just the associated stairways, which are going to allow them access and egress once the house is elevated off the ground as shown on um, Heidi Condon's plan there. And the only other thing they're proposing is a utility platform. They're gonna be losing their basement during this project. Uh, so the utilities are proposing to be on the first floor, but they are proposing a small utility platform on the left side of the house, which is a generator and AC condenser units out there on an elevated platform, which will also comply with the flood zone. Um, Overall, doing the project, they are increasing their impervious coverage slightly by 107 feet, uh, square feet, uh, which is mostly the new stairways and a little bit of that deck in the rear. But as you know, I just want to point out that now that the house is elevated, you know, there'll be approximately about 2,500 square feet under the house that will be stone or other pervious material. They're not proposing any enclosures or concrete slabs or anything like that under the building. It's just going to be, you know, cobble or stone or natural surface under there. So that's essentially what we're hoping to do on this, on this project here on Oceanside. I'll answer any questions you might have on it. Thank you, Richard. Amy, do you want to start? I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. So Thanks, Rick. Um, yeah, so this is one of our our uh, grant projects that Corey actually is working with this couple to try to help them get through the process of getting through the um, the money that's available to residents to um, elevate their homes. Um, this is a perfect candidate for this grant project and um, Think that it's pretty straightforward. We do have the structural plans for the project. Um, does not appear to be in coastal dune. It is in velocity zone, but we would condition this to be con consistent with Mass State Building Code for coastal wetland resource areas. One thing is um, the expansion of the deck towards the seawall. Just and just a, need to make sure that the um, that there's no easements restricting having decks in that for seawall and other you know uses in that area. But it, as long as that's in that zone that allows that use, then I think that would be okay. Um, and then as far as future lattice under the building, 
usually we have a condition where we would not want the lattice to be tightly put together and that also the lattice would be made of natural um, wood rather than composite. And that's, I think those are my comments, Frank. Um, thanks, Amy. Do we have any other plans? I mean, I'm looking at the one first floor plan in the decks. Did we get piling plans or? This one's turned sideways. And then that's the existing. Yeah. Which is really just being elevated. So there is a proposed plan, though, Frank, that should be in there, Amy, somewhere. All right. Uh, well, as long as, we, as long as we have that information. Oh. And river more structural. Yeah, system. it's a different sheet. It's I can try to get the the sheet for the that's piles, right. so you know what number to, it is. Okay, that's all right. Um, okay. Um, we so, might want to look at the site plan, Jen. <sighs> yeah, there we go. Except it's sideways. That's all right. <laughs> it's okay just, for you. Just tip, tip your head. <laughs> <Just> tip your <laughs> head. <laughs> There we go. Okay. A lot of piles. So this is on concrete piers? It's proposed to be placed on concrete, new concrete piers, yes. Okay. Uh, there's two levels of the house. The lowest piers are proposed to be at elevation 21.5, which is three and a half feet above the VE18 elevation. The front of the house is lower, the street side, the rear of the house is higher. So the rear piles will be um, another four feet above that. So yeah, new concrete piers poured in place under the house while it's elevated in place. Okay. okay. Um, Amy, I mean, uh, Richard, do you wanna? Uh, no, I don't really have a problem with this at all. I have a. a an informational question really i mean all the time on any of the beaches there's been a big push for wood pilings and discouragement of concrete um so no i'm just wondering um and person i mean personally that's not a feeling i have but i know that's what we've been leaning towards so i'm just wondering what the difference is or why the difference well well so on, on this one rich so this one is in that section of oceanside where it's not considered coastal dune because there's not a marsh on the other side it's not map barrier beach okay um and it's also in an area where there's not really an option for the house to be located anywhere else to get the piles in mm -hmm. so it would be difficult to site this house on driven wooden piles and i can see that i'm just but wondering it, from the standpoint of consistency when this because this will come up as other things. Other yeah, houses. I mean, we would still prefer to have it on driven wooden piles if mm -hmm. we could, but since th this is, it just happens to be in that stretch of Oceanside where it's in the location where all the other houses are on concrete footings too. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Not for me. Okay, Penny? Nope, I'm all set, thank you. Bre um, Brendan? Um, no, I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Looks like we have two hands up. All right. How about if I unmute Edelman? Hold on. And just, you want to give us your name and an address when you get on. Hi, Eric Damon, 53 Oceanside Drive. Uh, I live directly across the street from the house. Hey, Frank, uh, I, I have a few questions. Um, uh, so uh, uh, apologies uh, if you covered this ground, it just wasn't clear to me. So so number one, how much is the house gonna be lifted um, relative to what, what I'll call current grade? Uh, you know, the, the base elevation term is difficult for me to follow. So the, on the street side of the house, uh, it's going to be about 7.7 .7 feet above the existing grade. So the garage slab that's there today, it's going to be 7.7 .7 feet above that will be the top of the concrete piers. It's going to be up off the ground a bit. Yeah, it will. 
And as we've discussed, it's a high velocity zone. And guess what happens when you guys allow folks to lift houses, particularly with federal money? The high velocity zone ends up in my yard across the street. Um, I, that, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, you're just trading one person's problem for another person's problem. Um, uh, it, quite frustrating. I can tell you since the the, the ne next two the two houses next door were lifted, that my yard is inundated with tons of rocks. My house uh, driveway uh, and street is unpassable. I can't get in and out of my own driveway. Um, so uh, lifting this house is only going to add to that problem. I also am a little troubled by the notion that there's going to be cobble under underneath this house. That cobble will end up in my yard. I, I, I trust we, we we would not uh, allow cobblestones to be to be placed under under this house. If anyone's been to a storm down here, and I know you have, Frank, you, you can e easily imagine that a cobble um, uh, covering is is not going to work. And then the third question I've got is, as a condition of, of allowing federal money to lift houses across the seawall, I'll remind folks that, that the section across the street was the section where we had holdouts that declined to agree to the new and improved seawall that the, the town, state, and federal feds put in three years ago, which has made a world of difference for those portions of the seawall that agreed to it. We had holdouts across the street that declined to sign the easements, uh, particularly the the, uh, the the beach easements. Uh, are, are we requiring before we we, we give two hundred thousand dollars worth of federal tax money to folks that they uh, sign uh, the, the an easement so that two years from now, five years from now, if we did want to put in a passable seawall to protect all of us on the inland side, that these folks who are benefiting from federal grant money can't say no and thumb their noses at, at the rest of us across the street? The answer to that is yes. Yes, we do require them to sign an easement? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And uh, any comments on the other two questions? So is requirements, you know, obviously people are trying to get their house out of harm's way and the, their options are limited. Um, they can't go back on a solid foundation, which blocks the flow of the water. That's, it's not a rule from our town, it's, it's FEMA and CZM and a whole, whole bunch of agencies, Eric. So yeah. this is, they're, they're following the guidelines that are given to them in order to do a project here. If you wanna elevate your home and get it out of harm's way, you have to follow those regulations and and they can't put their house just up on a concrete foundation that blocks that mm -hmm. because they couldn't get a permit. So they're following the permittable standards of what's allowed. I understand your frustration. It's happened in, in many places. And it's also a shame that that seawall was not allowed to be elevated because it has helped so much in other areas. But this is the this is the recommended type of foundation for these folks to, to elevate their home, whether they're getting a grant or they're not getting a grant. You, if you go in to elevate your home, you're going to have to have it built up in a way that water can flow freely through there. So I, I don't know what else they would, would be able to do in, in that regard. And then we do not allow people to put solid surfaces like pour concrete underneath no. those houses because that's, that's not true frank uh, and I, it, I think you you know the neighborhood the the folks that to the left of them the two uh, the house that, that that was lifted to the left of them the entire width of that lot is concrete pad where there were where, where there was maybe eight foot one car wide of concrete pad that, before so that I, was allowed I, I, and, I, and hang on one, one more one more well, point. sorry well, let's, let's, Sorry, let's, no hang on Sorry, no, the, no, the you prior know what? owner no, of 54. Eric, Eric, let's, Eric, let's, let's no, just, run this it, as a meeting. I'll be really brief. Uh, no, the I'd, prior I'd rather, owner of 54 also. Hey, money mute him. Okay, Frank. The, the prior owner got, of 54 are we do this also. One, are we going to do this one question at a time? Okay, sure. If you want to do one question. Uh, okay. Time. They're just related. That's all. all right. So 
I, I'm unaware that the commission conditioned anybody to pour concrete underneath their whole house. And, and I'm happy to take a look at that. And if it was done, I'm curious as to whether it was done legally or illegally. Yeah, not under the house, the, the, from the street to the start of the house. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it was approved or not. I, I just know that it was done. Okay. And likewise, on 54 Oceanside, yep. if, if you drive out, that, that whole width of that lot from the street to the house is all, all concrete. Whereas before, there, were, there was one eight-foot section where the, the garage is and another mm -hmm. six-foot section uh, to the right of the right of the stairs of the house, and now that's all concrete. So I've got two. I'm going to have two houses across the street lifted, all, with an entire, you know, 100 uh, or 80 foot span of concrete lifted seven feet in the air in a high velocity zone. All of the stuff that otherwise was being blocked by those houses is now ending up in my house. In my house. All right. Well, I, I'm curious about. Doesn't seem advisable. I'm I'm curious about those conditions and i'm certainly going to take a look at it because if we didn't condition all that then they're not supposed to be done that way um it's frustrating to have all the wash over i know you deal with it you deal with lots of other debris and trash and and we're all aware of that but they're not requesting i'm not exactly sure maybe the engineer can answer what is supposed to be for hard surfaces on this or the driveway that's a question I'd like to have answered. Sure. Uh, so to the best of my knowledge, they weren't proposing to do anything with the existing paved areas between the house and the street. Obviously, some of, some of that's going to get tore up, you know, during construction. But um, on, as far as under the house, I believe they're open. You know, I, I mean, I, I said cobble, I, impervious or pervious surface. I think they're open to whatever the commission would like to see under there. Uh, they weren't proposing any hardscape under the building. Um, and, you know, as we had reviewed with them, you know, it'd have to be a pervious surface. I know they're open to whatever the commission would feel if it needed to be a grass or whatever it might be, but they weren't proposing to remove any of that pavement between the house and the street, to my knowledge. Do we have a plan that shows what the conditions will be on that lot when it's finished? I produced a plan um, and we did submit it. I haven't seen it yet in this um, in this arrangement here, but there is a there is a plan showing the proposed work on the existing house that would that went in with the submittal. Um, it's essentially showing the front and rear decks that I had mentioned and the the stairway on the side of the house but uh, does it does it address the lot the surfaces of the lot yes it has an impervious coverage table um it, it does include leaving all that pavement that's between the house has an existing coverage a total of 3688 square foot of coverage and we're proposing after the new work will be at uh 3795 square feet of coverage there it is uh, thank you. So yes. So as you can see, there's a big con between the, at the back of the house. There's a big concrete wall and a two big concrete patios that are currently there between the house and the wall. They're proposing to remove all that out of there, and that surface there will be, a, you know, some sort of natural pervious surface, as well as all the area around the house. Um, and again, the uh, the street side that hasn't anything brought up to my attention where they're proposing to remove any of that paved surface between the house and the street. But the coverage table does show that the 107 square foot of increase, that increase is pretty much in those new stairways uh, on the side of the house is where that most of that area comes from. Uh, those are there for obviously access and egress into the elevated house. So that plan, to the best of my knowledge, is the proposed condition when complete. Okay. Yeah, my point, Frank, is that they, the prior owner added a significant amount of concrete in the front of the house 
in the last year or two, which is again dramatically changed the rate at which rocks and water are propelled in the direction of my house. Right. I don't know but if that was approved or not, but it, it definitely was a significant change that's been made in the past year. And if they're okay. going to be allowed to keep that, then raising the house seven feet is only going to exas exacerbate the situation. So the plan that is up on the screen now, I don't know if you if, if you can see that. Yeah, but I can see it. It's showing a concrete wall that's being removed and a concrete deck that's being demoed. That's correct. Yeah, so when it's all, when when this is all done, whether whether to your so the benefit or demise, it's yeah. it, it, they'll it's going to be piers from front to back in this house. Yeah. So and that wall that's that's there now, and any of those things obstructions ha have to be removed as part of this project. Yeah, that that concrete wall on the left does provide protection. To, to folks on my my side of the street, it's about uh, three feet high. So if that's gone, then again, the rate at which rocks and water will come through is going to be that much higher. Right. So, Rick, the engineer, there's a it shows a concrete wall that's off property. If I'm yeah. if I'm reading that right. Yeah. And then it looks like there's a short wall that that turns and goes back. Yes. into the property so that uh, me looks to me like that's not proposed to be removed am i yeah that's correct uh, there are existing concrete retaining walls on both sides of that house the one on the left that um, the gentleman was just mentioning and then yes there is also one on the right side that stone retention retaining wall that goes from house to house that's currently there now okay um the end, you know, where the house is obviously going to be lifted in the air. So I would imagine there'd be some disturbance to that wall, but they're not proposing to remove it out of there. Um, and if we feel that it should stay there, then I think that's, you know, something we, we're, we're willing to work with. Um, I also want to point out, Frank, that uh, I was speaking to the abutter on the right out at the town hall when I saw you there before I knew about the Zoom meeting. And he was concerned about that wall on the right, you know, that goes from his house to their house and what was going to happen to that um, once this house gets lifted off the ground, if it was going to remain there. So there is some concerns about those existing walls that are there for sure. Okay, we got a couple more people with their hand up. So yeah, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Eric. Um, we have some, Jen. Can we let Jen in? Yeah, I am just unmuted, Jen. So you would just state your name and address, please. Jen, are you there? <laughs> Where'd she go? So we unmute you. For some reason, it takes time to un unmute people. I don't know why. <laughs> What's that? I don't, for hello, some reason, can you hear me? I got you now. Yep. There we go. Yes, hello. My name's Frank Donio. I live at 51 Oceanside, like directly next to Eric and across from the project. Got it. Okay. And so as Eric was stating, it's a tremendous problem with the amount of uh, rocks and, you know, debris that comes through during the storm. And when you're going to elevate it, it's just going to be even more. And the town hasn't really been doing anything. They used to come down with the, uh, with the plows to get rid of the rocks. And now they don't even do that. So this is just going to, you know, like you say, uh, it's a tremendous problem for us. In that wall that uh, I know Gary Garland, the one who's directly next to him is concerned about, is already uh, not in great shape. So this is really a concern. 
when does and then what is the uh, timeline of this project and how long is it going to take? The engineer might have the answer to that. Any ideas um, on the timing when the plan to start? Where do we go here? Come on. Richard, are you still on? I'm still here. Yeah, I'm back. No, I was muted there. So sorry. Uh, as you know, they're applying for a grant. I don't know exactly what the federal process is to uh, you know what that time frame is like. I know they're hoping to submit immediately as, as soon as possible as we get through the uh, the town permitting and get it right in. I believe their hope is to get started as soon as they can in the spring. Is my understanding. Is there any? Is there anything the town's going to do to help us with with this change? Nope. Um, how long of a project is it? It is. I mean, yeah, I how long? How long will the project take once it starts? Rick, Rick, yeah, that, uh, once they get, you know, the, of course they got to elevate the house. You know, uh, and you know, just ballparking these uh, that's the time estimates. Of course, you know, generally you've got you figure a week to elevate that house properly to get it high enough to work under it, and then you're pouring. Uh, I didn't do a head count on the piers, but there's got to be twenty some odd piers in there or more. I, I could easily see that taking, uh, you know, two two weeks, two to three weeks to get all those concrete piers poured and stripped and and then another few days to drop the house back down. So I think a solid month and a half or so, at least to start to finish to get this thing back down on the piers. Yeah, I, I would think it would take all of that. Yeah. Or, or longer. Yep. Weather dependent. So spring, spring into summer. Yeah. If that's when they can start it. We, I mean, we don't. Right. Okay, well, thank you for your time. Um, and then is, in terms of water flow, we're, we're gonna be looking at at this plan. Um, I, I just, I guess I have concerns. If there's retaining walls on either side, then it's gonna force that water into a smaller area when it comes through. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Frank, there's one more, there's a phone number, 617 Yep. 38-1451, I'm going to unmute that number. Okay. Right, right now, I'm going to unmute that phone number. Thanks. Hello? Good evening. You want to just state your name yeah. and address, please? Uh, Gary Gowland, 52 Oceanside. Uh, Good evening, Gary. Detroit, Mass. How are you? Um, so my concern is the uh, retaining wall uh, in the front. It's connected to the two houses. And I'd like to know what they're going to do with that retaining wall. No. Um, Rick? Yeah. So, you know, as we've been discussing, it seems like you know, this is the gentleman I spoke to outside the town hall. Yeah. Um, There hasn't been any solid answers on that. It seems like these walls would seem to be best if they stayed in place um, or, or even maybe extended under the building that connect to the other side. Uh, it's either they come out completely or or they remain and 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 connect. You know, I don't I don't see other options besides removing them or or improving them. If you remove mine, you're going to remove my stairs, my wraparound right. walkway, and everything. That, that can't be done. My back deck would be gone. Right. And, it would uh, have to be saw cut off the property line or something and a return built on it to turn towards the street, keep it on your property type of thing would be the only way to maintain that one. Um, I don't know how the walls got there house to house like that. Um, but yeah, I understand they're there today. And, if we just lift the house up and leave it where it is, like Frank said, it's going to funnel between those. So 
And the obvious answer is they either come out so it's sheet flow right through or the walls connect underneath the building. But this is Gary's wife, Bridget. But when you say it, it sheet flows right through, it that ends up in our driveway, in front of my garage, and in front of Eric and in Frank and Jen's home and Eric's home, if that wall is to be removed. And then my other concern is you're saying that they're removing the lower cement slab that's connected to the seawall. If anybody in this meeting remembers, 52 Oceanside Drive lost a good part of our seawall two years ago, and it wasn't repaired by the town. It was repaired by us, the homeowners, and now they're gonna compromise the seawall again by removing that cement slab in the back of their home. Um, well, as a typical condition, we look to have as much hard surface removed as possible. And what we find is that that just, when the water comes over, it just speeds up when it, when it hits a hard surface. And there's some other methods that they could do to um, dissipate that wave action or water action, either some different stones or some other material that, that we can we can look at or discuss. But typically the the conditions are that as minimal amount of impervious surface remain when these projects are, are done. Has anybody looked at the seawall that's behind that home? Hmm. I mean you're uh, planning on taking the cement slab down attached to a seawall that's already deteriorating, that's connected to the seawall behind our home. And, you, and the town wouldn't come and put any stones down there to support when we lost the wall. Well, I did all the work. <laughs> I, had, I had to pay for it. But, it. but whatever that is, when you're talking about removing all these rocks, you're undermining all that seawall and, and all my property all along that area. And then you also, another question, are you gonna have heavy machinery up there too on those rocks, removing it all? I'm not because sure, what you, gonna... I'm not sure you, what you mean by having machinery on the rocks. The machine's gonna go in, they're gonna jack up this house and then yeah. they're proposing that they're gonna remove the concrete wall and deck that's in the front of that house or the ocean side yeah. of the house. And so that's obviously going to take an excavator or some kind of equipment to remove those. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Heavy machinery, if it's going to go on the seawall, is it going to go on the pads up there in between the houses? And I don't, go I, I don't, I would assume that they have to work on their own property. And I don't, I don't think they'd be on top of the seawall. I hope not. I just paid a lot of money to fix the seawall. Okay. And, and I'm just saying, Connected, Frank. That all when the rocks get taken out of there and the cement, it all collapses. It cracks like an egg. I've seen it. I also rebuilt my back two decks. Okay. So I'm just very nervous about this retaining wall, about all the rocks and being connected with them, and, and having it fall apart. Okay. I, I understand. I, I'm taking in your concerns. Let's, um, so will we get a wall or what's going on or, or what's going to happen? Um, well, I, hearing this amount of information, my suggestion is going to be that we're going to continue this. And I want to take a look at the site. Maybe a couple of us can get out and just kind of review w what's there. And if there's any other um, alternates that we can we could consider or or if there's something that what happens typically when we allow when we condition a project we require that the owners do certain things so if maybe in in removing that concrete patio they have to replace that with some other type of permittable um, splash pad or something like that to to minimize erosion is something that the commission can can request or require as part of a permitting process 
And I, okay. Frank, if I could, Frank, I, I think they'd be open to that. Um, their impression was, you know, you want to get as much impervious material out of there as possible. I certainly understand what this gentleman next door is talking about. Yeah. When you jackhammering up next to the wall. I'm sure they'd be open to saw cutting, uh, leaving a strip of that so the the backside of the wall isn't undermined or leave some of that in place. Uh, the reason for removing it was for, you know, just to, um, you know, to meet the regulation as best we could. And, and, and that's my understanding, which is why you do that. And again, some of these regulations or a lot of the regulations are not our regulations. They're set up by FEMA and CZM. And we're trying you to- guys Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Frank, when you take it into consideration and you're going to do site visits and you're going to have another meeting on this, yeah. it'll get sent. Will yes. we be notarized on that? Will you tell us about these meetings? Um, so when we when we finish tonight, when we finish this discussion, we're going to vote to con continue this meeting to a date um, in the future, in the near future. And then um, We'll we'll figure out what other information we need to get. We'll try to get that information from the applicant or their engineer. And then some commission members may, if they want to take a ride out to take a look just to familiarize themselves with that with that location. Okay. Well, but you'll my, but, my concern, but, but you'll but you'll get notified. Well, um, I Frank, that's my concern. You sent a letter, right? I couldn't find the meeting. I drove up there today. I drove up again tonight. I asked somebody this afternoon. They told me it would be there. Wasn't there. I, I'm not the most right. computer guy. So we couldn't find the meeting. And now I'm on a telephone because I had an issue down on the water. So I'm on my phone. Right. I just want to make sure we do get notified. Without my neighbor's help, I would have never been able to get into so, this meeting. So, when we, should... so, so when, we, when, we, when we finish this discussion shortly... Yeah. We're going to condi we're going to um, uh, we're going to continue we're going to continue, continue, with, with we're going to continue this meeting to a specific date, and then yep. if you want to, you can contact the commission office, give them your email address, and you can be part of uh, of get, get the information for, or you can go to the town website and get the information yeah, I, I, for, for the link for the next meeting we couldn't find it on the on the website tonight that's why somebody okay. sent me the phone number maybe they could put it on the paper that they mail out just a link or something so you have it the, the, the phone the, the, this is this is a meeting this the, the notice is is nothing is set when those go out well basically what you get is notification that there's going to be a hearing then typically folks contact the commission they get the information as to when the meeting is. They give the commission their information, and, and you get forwarded the the link and things like that. So what I'm suggesting, you can hear when the next meeting is, then you call the conservation office, and and you can let or or email the conservation office. The, the email address is on the the website as well. Email them, give them your information, and then you'll get put on the list to be notified of the meeting. Okay. But shouldn't we be notified of the meeting because we we are their neighbors? I mean, this is affecting Just the first meeting. That, that you get so you get notified that there's going to be a meeting, and you're obviously aware of the meeting because because you're on it. So then, when we end this hearing tonight, we're going to continue this to a future date, and we're going to tell you what that date is. Okay. Okay. Eric Damon, we're going to, I think we're going to continue this anyway. So if it's a question, Eric, or something that you'd like to, to put in, but I, th I think we need, we got a few more hearings tonight. So if you can unmute Eric. Um, okay. Looks like he's going to wait. So let's have a motion to continue to um, not not the first December meeting, it's too full. The second December meeting. 19th. Yeah. I'll make I'll make a motion to continue 54 Oceanside to uh December 19th. Okay. Do I have a second? That was Richard. I'll second that. Second from Brandon. All in favor. Penny? Yes. 
and Frank, yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I just say, add one more thing? It's Rick from Sendak and Taylor. Oh, I'm sorry, Rick, sure. Yeah, Amy, I don't know if um, my concern, I, I understand the continuance and I think it's warranted. I don't know what kind of, I think they're up against some sort of deadline to get this FEMA grant in by a drop dead kind of a date. I believe it's sometime in December. Do you have any information about that? When, when that is? No, I, I don't know anything okay. about that actually. All right. Um, so. Well, if the, if that's a real concern, should we be continuing this to the next meeting? I know it's a, a busy schedule, but I don't want them to miss their ability to get this grant. Yeah, I mean, we can do that if you think we're going to close at the next meeting. I mean, I'd hate oh. to have them miss something. again. I'll certainly work hard to do whatever I need to do to get these plans changed and address any issues that we have to prior for that next meeting. But I don't think we're looking for you to change anything at this right. point, you know? Right, I understand. All right, but we do want to take a look at it and then hopefully we can do that. Maybe we can also find out from Corey what the deadline is on that. So I don't know if all the folks are still on here or not, Mr. Damon. Um, well, neighbors. if the owner of the property is on, he might be aware of what some deadline is. I mean. I, I, I don't know. I really don't know what the deadline's all about. I really don't. Sorry. Oh, here's a hand up. Hold on. It's a Renee. I'm going to unmute Renee. Renee, can you? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Can you just state your name and address, please? Sure. Renee Blodgett, uh, 54 Oceanside Drive. Okay. Do you uh, know what the... What, what, I believe what, the date we're working towards is the 5th of December um, for our package to be completed and what we've been scrambling around for, but I mean, certainly... Not happen. Yeah. Not happen. And, and what, what is that deadline all about, though? That's the FEMA grant application deadline. But 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 whose deadline is that though? Famous. Because because that that we we weren't going to make that deadline anyways. I guess unless we close tonight. We're not. And then may, well, and, but, but even then, that would be you guys would we would issue on the fifth. You wouldn't have them in hand on the fifth anyways. You know what I mean? So that wasn't. Yeah. Gonna... So that that I I don't know if that's the administrative date that we were given. I, mean, I know Corey's been working with us uh, on preparing the application and the, the package. Um, so the fifth was the date that that we were working towards. Um, but maybe that was a deadline she needed. I'm not sure. Yeah, that, that date look wasn't going to be achievable under this timeline. But OK, I think we probably go to the 19th then, state of the 19th. OK. All right, and let's find out from court. Maybe Thank you, Renee. Thanks for me. Sure. Um, hopefully that's just that they have to get their application in. Um, okay. Yep. All right. Um, so did I get a you got yeah, a motion we, and a motion second? Motion and a second. Yeah. And I got it all in favor with it was Penny. So we're good, right? Yeah, yep. we're good. Okay. Thank you. Um 181 Edward Foster Road. Someone from Joyce Consulting. I think you need to open this, Frank. I do? Yeah. It's a new filing, I think. I'm sorry. Um, on November 12, 21st, 2022, at 6 p.m., the Citrus Conservation Commission will hold a wetland hearing under Chapter 131, Section 4 of the Mass General Laws and Section 3070, Town of Citrus Bylaws, regarding the application of Timothy and Laura White for work related to grading, drainage, landscaping, and building improvements at a single family dwelling location at 181 Edward Foster Road, Citrus. About as another interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the virtual meeting will be available on the agenda post on the town website. 
Okay. Okay, so we have Mr. Joyce on the line. Mike Joyce is the civil engineer and also Tim White, who's the owner. They're both on the line, Frank. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Good evening, Commission. Good evening, Frank. Tim White, 181 Edward Foster Road. How are you? Good. How are you tonight? Good, Frank. Thank you. Uh, so uh, my wife and I have been considering a series of betterments in the in the uh, in our house. The primary being a renovation of a kitchen um, and first floor renovations, replacement of the driveway, and as part of this submission addressing the issue of some fill that we put in front of the house this spring that uh, Amy and I believe Brendan and I took a look at uh, a couple months ago. At that time, we had committed to submit an NOI and we've done this today. Uh, we're represented by uh, Joyce Engineering, Michael Joyce and Paul Marabito of Grady Consulting. And with that, I will turn this over to Mike. Thank you, Tim. Uh, Michael Joyce with Joyce Consulting Group, uh, as Tim mentioned, the civil engineer for the project. Um, so uh, the property is located, as I'm sure you're all familiar with it, is at 181 Edward Foster Road. Uh, it's an existing single family home uh, serviced by Town Water and Sewer. Uh, it's an existing three acre lot and directly butts Situate Harbor. Uh, as a result, there are three resource areas there's the, uh, the coastal bank. Coastal Dune and um, Coastal Storm Flowage, or uh, it's within the floodplain. Um, the Coastal Dune and the Coastal Bank were delineated by John Zimmer um, of South River Environmental, um, at the, located by a survey uh, during our field survey. Uh, the original survey was done, um, and then it was a while back, and that was updated uh, this summer. To, to locate the um, changes in grade. Um, so currently there are no existing stormwater uh, improvements on site. Uh, the lot kind of grades towards the, the harbor uh, and then the lot comes, raises back up where the coastal dune is and then comes back down um, out to the harbor. So. There is kind of a, a, a low area between the existing building and existing house and the edge of the coastal dune. Um, what the work we're proposing to do is uh, some landscape improvements. Uh, Tim is proposing to do some minor modifications to the existing building footprint. Uh, those include reworking an existing foyer, which is kind of shaded in light gray at the entrance of the building, and then uh, closing in kind of uh, squaring off the interior corner of the building, which is also shaded in light gray. Uh, so those are the two structural improvements to the existing building. Um, the proposed grading uh, also includes a proposed stone retaining wall. This is kind of to provide a, a level area outside the existing building um, to use for recreation. Uh, this, Proposed wall runs approximately parallel to the 50 foot buffer to the coastal dune. Uh, and then there'd be some additional regrading between the coastal dune and that proposed retaining wall in an effort to kind of make a localized uh, low point um, just for stormwater to gather uh, in the event of, in event of large storms. And also there were any tidal flooding events uh, be an area for uh, localized kind of just to have a defined area for the stormwater and water to flow to. Um, in addition to this work uh, is uh, some proposed stormwater improvements, uh, fairly significant. Uh, we're proposing a catch basin within the, the existing driveway, uh, and that catch basin would overflow to a, a duplex pump chamber, uh, which would pump the stormwater to a proposed infiltration area at the rear of the property. Uh, that, that infiltration area consists of 24 Caltech storm chambers, uh, which is the way we sized as um, because we're not really adding any new impervious area. Uh, we, we took the existing impervious area and um, sized the stormwater system for at least an inch of uh, stormwater over that entirety of the impervious area on the site. Uh, we actually ended up being at about 1.25 inches um, of storage, which is, is about 880 cubic feet of stormwater. So, um, and the reason we used an inch is typically about 90% of the rainstorms are an inch or less. Um, so that's 
the volume available within that stormwater system uh, would would uh, be there'd be that much storage uh, for ninety percent of the storms. Uh, in the event that there was, um, and I should mention, not, not only is the driveway and catch basin directed to that, but all the roof leaders will be reworked and um, sent to that stormwater system as well. But they'd be sent via gravity rather than via pump system. Um, and then there is uh, an overflow from the or an area drain that would act like an over, overflow if um, the stormwater system were to be um, to surcharge and, and that outlets towards the and kind of swales towards the proposed localized low area, which I should mention is also kind of where the low area of the site is now. We're just kind of defining it a little bit better. Um, so those are the proposed the main main proposed changes. Um, I don't know if um, I'd like to open it to questions unless Tim has anything to add. Um, okay. Uh, Amy, do you want to start this? Um, geez. Well, I'll start with DEP had no comments. Um, it was assigned a DEP number and the site is in land subject to coastal storm flowage. The, at least the, the majority of the sites in AE 15 um, when it's up to the coastal storm flowage portion of the site, like along, you know, the beach ish is also in um, that Limwa elevation 16, but that's really close to the wall. So not really in this project area, but um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's been, this site has been, you know, has evolved over time, like before my time, definitely, and probably before your time too, there's been a number of projects at this property. Um, so the site is, site is, uh, had a lot of different projects. So, so we, we know there's resource area out here. There's, there's buffer to BVW, there's flood zone. There's there's resource area, um, but but largely, I mean, it's a altered altered site, right? So it's it's got historical lawn and property with a house, you know, landscaping on the on the site. Um, I think everybody on the commission is is familiar with the property, so this is just the formalized submission where he's trying to, where Mr. White is trying to make some improvements here. Um, one of the things that I was um, gonna suggest was probably putting the system out to a peer review um, would be one of the suggestions I was gonna make. And um, we also, just to let you know, cause I forwarded the comments to you, but that we did have a butters that had questions about um, the project as well. So you're, you're aware of that. Um, that's about what I have to say for now. Okay. Thanks, Amy. Um, I don't know where to start. Penny? I don't know where to start either. Um, I don't know. I, I don't understand what the wall's supposed to do outside the 50 foot between the 50 and 100. Could somebody explain that to me? If I can jump is that in. So, wall or? Well, part of it is aesthetics. And the other part is to delineate the area of the lowlands in front uh, and then define that area as a. Uh, area that's available for uh, additional stormwater or flowage, right? So um, we're trying to simply grade it, allow it to drain to a, to a centralized area and the uh, retaining wall will just define the upland area uh, and the recreational lawn. 
How, so how yes. high is that retaining wall? It's, uh, it's no more than three feet tall. Um, it's two to three feet. It'd be dry set stone uh, walls, I think what we're proposing at the current time. So as we know, it's a large lot, right? It's 3.8 yeah. acres, right? And so yeah. our feeling was to establish the wall, establish the perimeter of the landscaped lawn, and then define the low area there, I suppose in a, in a, in a horrible situation, there could be some protection, but that's really not the, the, uh, the idea. The idea is more to give it some definition and allow the, uh, any flowage to be contained in that area and define the low spots. You can, you can see we've got it down to like 7.4 in that one area. Okay. Um, and where is your replication from years ago? I'm having a hard time finding it on this. The uh, wetlands so replication you did years ago for out front. So it would where, be, where uh, is that? Which replication are you referring to? Oh. Frank, how, how many years ago was that? It was quite a while ago. It was when so as you know, there's, there's been numerous orders of conditions that have been and certificates of compliance. So we can forward you the new the existing certificates of compliance. Well, I'm I'm just good. trying to see it on this plan, sir. Where the wetlands replication is from before. I don't see it on this plan. That's my confusion. The trees and the vegetation are located what's there now. Okay. All right. So in behind gonna, the septic. Yeah. Well, we're gonna move from one person to the other, but sure. Is there a reason that there's not a wetlands, any wetlands delineation on this? Uh the the wetlands are delivered, Frank. The, the flagging up by the beach. Hmm. But weren't there some wetlands on site um, as well with it? I'll defer to Mike, but I think the wetlands report is in the filing. Yeah, um, John John Zimmer had gone out and flagged it, and he, he flagged all the the wetlands he observed on site, and um, those flags are what we located in our, in our survey. So you didn't include any of the wetlands from previous filings or applications. We did, uh, we just purely based it on what what John delineated in the site in the in the field. Um, I, I think that I think you're probably going to want to go back and find some other delineated wetlands. I uh, I think all the certificates of compliance were filed and become part of the deed. That they, they could be there, but there would also be areas that were wetlands that were delineated and and marked on the on the plan, Tim. And, and I I I would say that there's more than what we're seeing on this plan but we can we could we got a thick file so um but maybe that's something john should be looking at as well okay well i want to get through the members um so um richard I want to go back to uh, what Penny was asking about that wall. I'm just wondering if it has to be a wall. I can understand why they want, why there might be a wish for a demarcation, but couldn't it be a post and rail fence that could be very handsomely done or something like that? So you don't have another solid surface there. That would be the first thing I would say. Otherwise, um, I wish our friend Doug was here for some of the engineering stuff, but um, that would be it for the moment. And I'm quite sure that before we're done, I'll have more questions. So <clears throat> we could eliminate the 
the stone wall and just swell it down to the low area and get rid of the hard surface um, if that was something the commission would be interested in. I don't think a fence between the grade change between elevation 10 and seven at the low spot or 10 and eight, the fence would then be at 10. It really wouldn't, I mean, I, we could look at it, but we could, we could swell it down if that was, if the hard surface okay. was an issue. Well, I, I appreciate the consideration. I mean, Let's keep is, that in it mind. It is pretty small. The top of wall is at 11. And then the surrounding area on the back side is like eight, twelve. Uh, so you're you're looking at um, or feet, nine. So. You're only looking at about twenty four inches above. Mm -hmm. Got it. And the and the top of wall, the eleven, would be approximately a foot above the lawn and just high enough to give it an area where you could mow up against. We're trying to keep it less than three feet or four feet because we don't want to have an issue of uh, fall protection. Okay. You know, we don't want to have to put a rail on it. Yeah. I appreciate the explanation. Just we'll keep it in mind as we move along here. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else, Richard? Not for now. Not for now, Frank. Okay, Brendan. Yeah, I guess um, I have some mixed feelings about the wall too. It's a little confusing, but um, otherwise, yeah, I, I don't really have any questions. I mean, I was out there and so this all kind of makes sense. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Um, do we have anybody in the audience for this? Um, we do, we have somebody in the audience. Jeff DeLisi. Hold on. Hey, Jeff. Hello. Good evening. Hi. Um, Jeff DeLisi. I'm with Armberger DeLisi and Harris. And uh, we represent the abutters to the southeast uh, at 179 Edward Foster, Kevin and Lisa Kearns. Um, just at the outset, uh, Mr. White was uh, gracious enough to, uh, to, to meet me at the site, walk me through his plans and the site, uh, and uh, we very much appreciate that. Our concern really is limited to any impacts that any of this work might have on our property, um, which basically is uh, from the house uh, to the north side of the driveway and then all the way down to the harbor. Um, that kind of expansive lawn over there is all land subject to coastal storm flowage and, and from time to time uh, there are some drainage issues and things of that nature that occur out there. Um, uh, I know the, the, the board is, Frank, I think you mentioned that kind of, and Penny, there's some history here. Uh, I think that um, you know we, we we would like to understand the history, uh, to understand where any other delineated areas may be, uh, which which kind of caused me to be thinking. It sounds like uh, John Zimmer was out there and did a delineation based upon you know what he saw on the site. I'm wondering if maybe. Um, if maybe there needs to be some kind of soil analysis in addition to that, uh, I'll leave that to somebody smarter than me with respect to these areas. Um, I'm, I'm happy Amy mentioned peer review. I think absolutely there should be a peer review here. Um, my understanding is that there may have been some work recently between the 50 foot buffer and the 100 foot buffer in particular, kind of between the where the wall is proposed to be and the 100 foot buffer, where there may have been some fill brought in and some uh, some lawn. Uh, and that was never really accounted for. And, and so now I, I'm wondering whether the, whether this plan shows the condition that existed before that work or the condition that occurred after that work. Because I'm, I'm thinking that in order to fully understand the impacts of how the, the stormwater works on this property, it, it might make sense to, you know, to for a peer review engineer to understand what existed before 
um, uh, any of that work may have been done or those activities and, and, and then presently. Um, and then finally, you know, I'm wondering uh, whether or not, um, I think that they're, I think that they're proposing some landscaping activities uh, in the 50 foot buffer strip, which kind of, um, kind of smooth out the, the bumps and uh, the peaks and valleys. So I think uh, the intention is to kind of promote drainage, um, you know, toward, towards, uh, towards the area where you actually see at a round contour, I don't know, eight uh, over by where you see 50 foot buffer to coastal um, dune on the green line in that approximate area perhaps. Um, and so I'm just wondering if there's a need for a variance for uh, any work within that 50 foot. Uh, and again, we're, we're not necessarily opposed to this project at all. We just want to make certain that, uh, you know, from, from our standpoint, the drainage patterns aren't affected and things of that nature. Thank you. I would strongly encourage you. Thank you. So again, I'll defer to Mike for the engineering, but one of the goals here is to help uh, flooding. So a significant amount of water comes down the, the driveway easement, right, which starts at Emory Bowden's, flows down across the Kearns property, and then flows out uh, towards the harbor. And so by containing that, flowage here in a storm drain uh, at significant cost, right? We're then pumping it up and, and uh, storing the water in a Caltech system. None of this work is, would be required. The extent of the uh, addition isn't large enough. It's only, we're only adding 144 square feet. So, but what would, we are trying to do is capture the runoff from the roof the runoff from the driveway, right? Store it in the Caltex system and let it flow back into the aquifer over time. Very similar to the storm management system that the Kearns has put in uh, above us. Uh, and that one had to go in, I believe, due to the size of the home. One of the problems that the property has faced over the years is that with all the additional buildings, they go ahead and hard surfaces that have gone on. We have more flowage every year. We have houses right behind us that are up maybe four feet above our property where the downspouts just discharge essentially to the property line. So what we're trying to do here is regrade the property slowly. You can see it goes 12 to 11 to nine to eight to get a natural flowage towards the harbor, reduce the amount of water at any given time by inducing the Caltech system, right? And eventually, essentially just slow down the amount of water when we have a one inch rainfall. Additionally, we're at, we are proposing to put a patio in the back and acknowledging that that surface could be harder even if we use a pavers on stone dust, we're picking that water up in a roof drain and sending it to the Caltech system. So essentially what we're doing is bettering the flow of the water at significant cost, right? Um, and that should reduce any concerns that the current property has down by the harbor, because if you can scroll up, please, to the, towards the harbor, you'll see that the berm that separates the two properties is at elevation nine, and we're staying right here at nine, eight, five, eight, all the way down to seven, four. So essentially we're grading this off so that there'd be a nice steady flow away from the other properties. This property over here is on essentially gravel. Paul Marabito has reviewed this and is in support and they're at elevation 11. So we're utilizing the small area here essentially to retain the water uh, that would then naturally dissipate out to the harbor.
Okay. I think it's, all, it's also important to know, right, that as we have consistently over the last 23 years, we're not looking to expand the building, right? We're not looking to further develop the project. We're simply looking to continually to better the conditions of the land. Okay, thank you, Tim. Um, do we have anybody else? Uh, we have Paul Marabito. Yes, we have one more hand. We have Paul Marabito. I'm gonna unmute him. Hold on, please. Hi, Frank. Can you hear me? You got, you're in a little bit of a canyon. Hi, Frank. We got you now. Okay. Um, one thing I'd like to point out is um, Tim White indicated that there were some other. Uh, Tim White indicated that there were <laughs> some other. Um, Order conditions that apply to the property. And I believe you mentioned, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe you mentioned that he's already, re he's already received a certificate of compliance for those. If, if that's the case, then um, the um, uh, delineation of the, of the coastal dune and the coastal bank is, a, is the most recent uh, delineation by John Zimmer. And the um, our previous work that was approved under the order conditions apparently has been approved under the certificate of compliance. So I, I think the only resource areas on the plan would be the coastal dune and the um, uh, top of the coastal bank. The wetland plants on the west side of the house, there's uh, several trees in there, which I believe he installed as part of a uh, mitigation uh, requirement from a previous order conditions. And the point I'm making is if, if all the previous work has been signed off under, under a valid certificate of compliance, then the resource areas on this plan should be up to date in their current. I don't know, uh, as you know, I'm a direct butter on the west side. I don't know of any uh, wetland areas on the white property and, and in that location of his property. It's all a mowed lawn, and it always has been, to the best of my knowledge, going back to 19, I mean, 1894. Um, that wall he's proposing on the harbor side of the house would um, be a big improvement for drainage purposes. It'll uh, contain the water coming out of the, the leaching area to the south side of the house. It, it, it also picks up uh, runoff from the, the northerly side of the um, homes on Sunset Road. And as he mentioned, it's also picking up some runoff coming off of Edward Foster Road that where the, where some of the roadway runoff is directly uh, discharged on his property. So I, I think this plan is a big improvement from what's always been there as far as I can remember. It uh, will uh, channel the water to a better location and will afford him a, a much more uh, usable yard area on the ocean side of the house. Um, I think those are all the comments I have at this point. Um, okay. I'll, I'll uh, end, end with that. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Well, I know you're familiar with that. I just like, if we're going to have a peer review person, I think they should look at the folder and, and see if there aren't any other wetlands areas, because I thought there was some wetlands restoration in a couple of areas um, to the rear of that house, but maybe I'm, it's been a, a lot of projects and a lot of time, but I, I think we should just make sure that there aren't any other areas that have been overlooked. Um, so I, I wanna be perfectly clear. There, there has been order of conditions to echo pulse uh, over the years. There was, we had put a 12 foot addition on the house we did the Phragmites reclamation. I'm gonna say four years, five, six, seven years ago, we did a reclamation there. All of that work was reviewed. All of that work was signed off and certificates of compliance 
were issued for all of that work. There are no open order conditions on the property. And so in our position to echo Paul's statement is that the uh, wetlands are delineated or resource zones are delineated now as they stand. And as we went through this on numerous occasions, five, six, seven years ago, again, to echo Paul's statement, the land is historically mowed. We have documentations as well as pictures of that that go all the way back to the early 1900s. So I, I appreciate that, that someone thinks that maybe there should be wetlands there, but they all are signed, all the orders and conditions are completed and signed off. Going all the way back to the septic system that was installed during the land split. If the commission remembers, this was all one property all the way out to Edward Foster Road owned by the Rulons and then the Frasers. Thanks, Tim. I, I, I understand that there have been lots of orders and conditions and there have been lots of certificates of compliance. My question still is, are there any other areas on this property that would denote it as wetlands that, that should still be on that plan? And I think we have that in a file. If, if someone disputes that, or if they're not there, then that's pretty easy. But we have a lot of files. There's been a lot of changes. And I just want to make sure that we have checked those files and make sure that they're, if they were if they were flagged as wetlands or they were marked as wetlands before and someone and they're not wetlands now, let's take a look at that and see if there are any other changes that happen because there's been a lot of activity on this property. And I, I'm well aware of the changes. I, I worked on that property. I think it was Father Good or something was there when it was just a small ranch a long time ago. So I'm pretty familiar with that, that property over the years. And I just want to make sure that we look to see if there's any other areas that had been flagged in the past. All right, um, and I appreciate that, Frank. It's not, it's, I, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm not misunderstanding it. There's no impediment to doing work on a property as long as it meets the criteria, correct? I, I, I think we just want to be sure that we all have the, the correct information on the plan oh, to I start agree. with. So I agree. But let's get that part i think part of the peer review isn't just about looking at the drainage and whether the drainage works or not but let's make sure that we have for sure marked all the resource areas the other question i have is i'm looking at this plan and i'm seeing a half an acre that's being filled there's a proposed fill area for 22,000 350 feet so i'm assuming that that's a strip between the the stone wall coming all the way around the stone wall and all those contours um do we have an idea how much fill is being brought in yeah so, in terms in terms of yardage um this is michael joyce um joyce consulting group uh so that 22,000 square Square feet's uh, more more a disturbance area than a fill area because uh, in some areas we are cutting in some areas are, we are filling. There is more fill than cut throughout the site. Uh, it's about we we it's about uh, we're estimating two hundred and twenty yards of fill will be coming in. But that twenty two thousand square feet, it's, it's kind of an area of disturbance rather than a um, area of fill. Okay. Then the other thing. When I look at that, it looks to me like the existing contours in that area are at eight feet, 7.9, and it's being elevated to nine and a half feet. So it's being elevated a good foot and a half. Um, so the, ahead, uh, the, the fill areas, it, it depends on where you are, like in... Well, let's go along the property line. Yeah, I was going to say the largest fill is probably right along the um, eastern property line, I believe. So and I think in there it goes up about nine inches. I think it goes from 8.6 to 9.5. Well, um, I, I'm seeing 7.9 to 9.5. So my yeah, math is like a foot and a half. If we could scroll up the plan a little bit, I can, um, I can look here.
yeah so yeah so, you're you're right it's it's between so, so it jumps from 7.9 to 8.6 fairly quickly so uh, so is, so the abutting property is at eight and a half feet and prior to this fill this is at eight feet so that was sloping towards mr white's property when this is being filled that's gonna raise that higher than than the abutting property if i'm not mistaken it, it will raise it along there there is an existing berm along the property line um so once you get down to the 8.6 it actually gets lower on the other other side of the property um we could get additional survey for that as well but but you you're correct there that does get raised along that property line okay it, the intention is not to cause flowage onto the other property line if again if you could scroll up again intention is just the opposite right and we may have to adjust the grades the idea is from the berm to slope down at a naturally gradual equal pitch to the low area right so it, it, we are doing that for aesthetic purposes. We'd also like to take out this, some undulating low spots that um, can on occasion puddle and we'd like to get rid of the um, mosquito infestation that can happen there. Um, okay. And so the idea, Frank, is to just, if, again, if you could pull, scroll up just a little bit more, right? To go from the berm and gently and consistently pitch everything away to this one existing low spot 7.4 and if you scroll down and go the other way towards um sunset road again the same thing right take take the elevation and slowly march it right down to the 7.4 as you mm -hmm. can see from the contours there's a lot of ups and downs on the property right, right. so it's just a natural slow grading it's a big lot, as you know, right? So we're going from 10 to nine in almost 60 feet, right? I mean, it's it's just a very gradual pitch to get all the flowage, which frankly comes off of many of the hard surfaces abutting the property. 18 mm -hmm. sunset, 10 sunset, right? The retaining walls. Um, and so acknowledging that we're low, and acknowledging that we're always going to have flowage from the abutting property, we're pitching it all towards the hopper. And, okay. retain, and retaining 850 gallons, cubic feet, excuse me, in the Caltech system. Okay. Which would then slowly leach the water back into the aquifer, which is why we do all these stormwater recharge systems, particularly in commercial properties, right? The goal is to get the water back into the aquifer system and help with droughts and other issues, right? So what we're doing is taking the water and slowly migrating it back into the system right. instead of just running off. Yeah, I, I, I get that. And I think that the additions that you're talking about are pretty insignificant given the work that you're doing to that, Tim. I guess my concern, like Richard, I, and I understand the desire to have a wall here and make some separation aesthetically it works well and if it doesn't impact any of the flow I, I, i'm not seeing a big issue but we'll we'll just check to be sure that that's um correct i guess my concern more is it seems like the natural flow of water from edward foster road has been through these properties and unfortunately it travels down towards your house and then kind of settles there because it gets high again as you get over to Henry Lane and whatever we can see that on the plan so when you raise up that area between your property and your neighbor it looks to me like it's it's you're not going to be sending water back towards them but water that naturally flowed before the other way is going to not flow like that anymore well <clears throat> so the goal is not to raise it's not to dam up the property but I will, my, my understanding of the way the code reads, right, is that it is inappropriate to install a structure that caused flowage onto another property. The code doesn't say that you must maintain the right for people, for other flowage to enter your property. Now, we acknowledge that, that there is water. That's why we're constructing the low spot 
to give it a place to go to. I mean, my understanding, there is no criteria for land subject to coastal flowage. So conceivably, we could be submitting something that said fill the whole thing in. We don't think that would be good for us or our abutters, right? So we are finding, I think, a, a, an excellent middle ground by giving a place for water to go and storing other water and letting it leach back into the system. Again, no different than if we were constructing something new and we're being mandated to do that work. We're I, not I, being mandated to do it. We're doing it as a voluntary betterment. I, I, I'm not disagreeing with the stormwater piece of it, Tim, or picking up flowage from the driveway and whatnot. The only concern that, that I, well, I see two things is we're adding fill over an area that was supposed to be a restoration area. So I want to find out what that the prior- That is not a true statement, Frank. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, not. well, let's 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 let the let's let the the peer review folks look at that, and maybe it it needs not only an engineer, but maybe it needs an environmental person to take a look at it. <clears throat> Happy to cooperate, as we okay. all know, these things none of these activities. I I, I I understand. There's a whole bunch of things going on there, and we just want to be sure that that it's consistent with other orders from prior commissions or, or if the changes are going to be made that are beneficial, let's, let's try to work with that. I know that you've been frustrated with a wet yard no. and, and trying to make, have a balance between maintaining a, a not, not to crow. We're not frustrated. We, we love living here. We have every intention to stay here. We love the, the house, the size that it is. We're not, frankly, unlike many, many lots in this neighborhood, as we all know, we're not looking to increase the size of the structure. We're happy with it the way it is, right? And, you know, and frankly, as we all know, there's a relatively large structure going at the end of our driveway. I'm slightly concerned about that and what it's going to cause for us, but that's not in our purview to use your vernacular. Okay. I, I just, in, with coastal storm flowage, the idea is that the water can move. I, 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 I'm not an engineer. Yeah, I, I'm just, just note. I'm noting the changes on the plan, and I think we've been in agreement that we do need someone to take a look at it and just make sure that it's compliant with those regulations. I think yeah, that's it, pretty. It, just, just to revisit that berm along the the property line. Um, I think what may our intention wasn't to cut off, run off, or cause a hardship on anyone else's property. I think we may have been chasing the chasing the grade, so to speak. Um, when we ended up starting at the low air at nine point four four came up, um, we can certainly look at that and make sure that we're we're matching the top of the existing berm and not not going higher. Okay. That is the intention. Okay. All right. So I, along, along these lines, acknowledging that the peer review for the site may take a little while, I think we're going to potentially, with Amy's approval, submit an RDA for this little 44 square foot addition here. And the, the 100 square feet here is actually on a hard surface now at the moment. So that's not uh, increasing the hard surface at all. And that would allow us to get the building permit going for the kitchen renovation. Is that possible? I don't see why not. I mean, they're so insignificant. Yeah, I would agree. Thank you. So we'll file that. I filed the plans with the building department today. Um, and we'll I'll follow up with Amy on that. Super. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So how much time do we think Amy, are we talking about a month? Are we talking about? Well, let, 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 let's hold on here, folks. So what are we talking about? We've talked a lot. We've talked a lot about a lot of things. So we want to make sure that Amy does the right thing. Well, I want to, I, I think there's two things. I think we want to look at the, 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 uh, um, the amount of fill that's added. And is that going to change any resource areas in terms of the, um, I just checked out of my. Well, there's a stormwater review, which needs to be supported by, you know, calculations and the whole nine yards mm -hmm. in review of the plan, which I actually already, I have a number for that review already. I can get okay. that going right away. Yep. And I just, we talked a little bit about accuracy of the resource areas. 
Right. And I mean, I, I'm pretty familiar with the project. I mean, and, and you, you all are familiar with the project too. I mean, it's an altered resource area. There's, there's, there's no, you know what I mean? There's, there's nothing new about that. That it's, it, it, I don't, not so sure um, how beneficial a second set of eyes on this resource area is really. I mean, I think mostly it's land subject to coastal storm flowage. We know I, that in, in the area where the trees, that that's wet. It's, it's definitely wet. If you wanna start talking soils, I mean, you could probably have a couple of wetland scientists out here and your lines are gonna change. I mean, you know, John, John Zimmer it was, is out here now. We had Brad, I think Tim had Brad Holmes out here for the 10 years before I was here. So I think his opinion might be slightly different than John's, but, and probably if we bring Art Allen out, he might have the whole thing looking different. So do you want to go down that, that, that? I think that, that we path? need to look, I think we need to look back at the files and yeah. the orders from the other commission members and see if there aren't any additional resource areas in that area that, that well, should be addressed. I already have. I mean, like Tim says, there is Phragmites up along the front wall and like Paul Marabito confirmed too. I mean, there's was area along the front that was that was dealt with, but otherwise there was the area in the back by the trees that was planted, but then it blew up. So, I mean, it looks a little bit different. I mean, this area, it, you know, it, it moves, shifts and migrates like coastal systems do. It's subject to change. It's on the point. It's constantly moving. So, it, it, I mean, I, I kind of do agree with Mr. White in the fact that this area is, it does need to be considered today and what it represents today and that it might not be the same as it was, you know, six years ago. It's going to look a little bit different just because the environment changes constantly out there. But um, I think mostly it's land subject to coastal storm flowage is what you're looking at. And, but we can make sure that it's accurate and that it doesn't look completely different than it did before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't think we need to hire somebody to do that. Do you? Well, I think once we look at the folder and see what was there, we, 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 we could talk about that. Okay, so we'll leave that open. Yep. Sounds good. So Frank, I, I'm gonna have to get, I think in deference, I'll have to get Adam Brodsky uh, involved, council who handled this when we went through this last time and closed out all the other order conditions. Um, you know, it, it's, it'll be frustrating to have to relitigate paperwork that was properly filed and uh, submitted at the registry of deeds you know it it I understand that people and certain people in the commission want to go back and, and relook at every item every time we file but the whole reason that we go through this and file a certificate of compliance is to close the activity and then move forward right I, I I and understand, it, Tim. It, I, it, I, it, I it, look at. I, 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 I it'll be grossly unfair, Frank. To just consistently have to talk about twenty-three years of history every time we make any. The whole property is regulated, right? The fact that we can't even do a renovation of a kitchen that adds one hundred and forty-four square feet without a firing, but that's fine. It's the way the world works, right? But it it flows both ways, and the idea of closing these issues is to close the issue. Tim, you can have an order conditioned, you can close it, you can issue orders, you can still have a wetlands on your property when you're done with it. I, I, I agree. And but okay. to Amy's point, it can also change and evolve, right? <sighs> we, 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 we've tried to be cooperative, we'll be cooperative here on this one, right? But we're going to have to get council involved again, it's going to be unfortunate. Yeah. Well, I don't Okay, I, I I just want to make sure that we're not walking away from any areas that were delineated before as wetlands. Yeah, so I will take out all the two last former filings and have those handy to you, Frank, 
Okay. And we'll, we'll do a comparison just to make sure we're not missing something. Big. That's great. I don't, I, I don't want to put any undue I don't expense. Think we are. I don't, I don't, I don't think I, we are. I don't want to put any undue expense on Mr. White either. I just want to be sure that we are consistent with the other, with the other orders that were placed on this property before. Understood. Okay. Penny? As a member of the board, I 100% am behind Frank. I just want to make sure everything is up to snuff. And I have his back. Thank you. All right. So how much time do we need to continue this? Or want to continue this? Well, I would say that peer reviews are going back and forth at least two to three times. So we'll say two on this. And it we do have the holidays we're contending with. So why don't we land on the second January meeting? Is that okay with everybody? That is that sense. does that work, Tim? Uh, you know, Frank, it's it, it it does, right? So it's the uh, obviously we want to get the building renovation going, right? Yep. The the renovation of the house happens, the kitchen happens one way or the other, whether we do this betterment or not, right? So yep. um, the, at some point in time, we're going to have to repave the driveway, but that wouldn't happen until summertime anyway. And right. it would be the it would be the last thing I did after the end of construction, anyways. Right. right. Yeah. So you're um, gonna. I mean, you're gonna get moving on the construction part on the house, yeah. which which you can do this time of year. And any work like this, realistically, we you're wouldn't not gonna be doing do it till, till spring, anyways. Well, right. though, you know, I mean, some of it. I'll take that back. Some of it might be actually better to do when the frost is in the ground, right? It, the machines don't tear everything up quite as badly. Yeah. But we'll, we'll work with the commission. We understand that you have to be consistent and that you have responsibilities. We get it. Okay. So you're looking at the 23rd of January. If I understand this. I thought we just said January 23rd. Or, okay. Yeah, I think it's it's not the 16th because that's MLK. Okay. Uh, I think it's the I think it's the twenty third. I, I don't remember. If Frank, if Jen, Jen is Jen... nodding up and down, then that's probably the day. She, she is a lot. Oh, good. So okay. that's say one twenty. Really? Is that is that right? Yep. The yes. Ninth and the twenty third. Yeah, that sounds right to me too. Okay. So that's my motion. To 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 con continue, continue to the twenty third. Twenty third of January twenty. Okay. So that's a motion from Richard. Do we have a second? A second that. Second from Ren. Brennan, all in favor? Penny? Yes. Frank, yes. Okay, thank you. Tim, I'm going to send you the 53G request soon. Uh, what's a 53D request? It's G, as in George. And okay. it, that's when I ask you for money to fund the peer review for the stormwater. How bad's the damage? We can talk about it, but it's not, <laughs> not too bad. All right. Have a good night, everybody. You Frank, thank, you. thank you. All right. Um, 90 Old Forge Road, Hilltop Properties. On November 11th, 21st, 2022, at p.m., the Situated Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under 131, Section 4 of the Mass General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Situated Code. Bylaws regarding the application of Hilltop Properties Group for work related to a septic system repair and driveway paving at a single family dwelling location, 90 Old Forge Road, situate. About as another interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the meeting is available on the agenda post on the town website. So, do we have somebody from 90 Old Forge Road? We have David. Um, 
Can you hear me? Calnert, I think we got you. Okay, great. Uh, yes, Dave Kleiner from Collins Civil Engineering Group. Uh, we're here to uh, do a Title V repair system for 90 Old Fort Roads Road. Um, just to go over the plan quickly, uh, the green is the desert, the delineated wetlands by Brooke Monroe, uh, wetland scientist. The uh, orange is the 50 foot and the purple is the 100 foot buffer. Uh, the system will be completely outside the 100 foot next to the road in the northeast corner of the property. Um, the, the front of the system towards the road will be fairly flat and with the grade and the back of the system towards the house, there'll be, uh, it'll be raised up about a couple of feet. Um, we do propose a silt fence and it runs from the 100 foot buffer along the driveway uh, around the limit of work, around the existing um, decom uh, the existing leaching pits, you'll see them in the back of the property. Uh, they're, they're circular pits. They're both inside the 50 foot buffer. Uh, we're gonna have to decommission those which require um, just um, pumping them, filling them with sand and crushing them in place. Uh, we, won't, we won't be removing anything. Um, this will be a pump system. The pump, the tank and the pump will be behind the house outside the 50. Uh, so the only work really inside the 50 is the, decomm is the decommissioning of the existing leaching systems. Um, the cell fence will go around that area, around the, in, in the lawn area, um, previously disturbed lawn area, follow up along the uh, east side of the property um, and around the, the proposed septic system. Uh, of course, this, this will be an eight inch waddle and it will remain in place until everything is stabilized. Uh, along with this notice of intent, we would like to, um, it's a stone driveway, but it's more, it's more if you've been out there, it's a, it's a compact gravel driveway. And uh, the owner would like to pave that driveway. Uh, for mitigation on paving that driveway, they would like to put a uh, stone trench around the um, corner of the driveway at the garage where the low point is, everything flows to that point. This would allow storm water runoff to flow into a stone trench and then overflow uh, like a level spreader. Um, so there won't be any erosion. Um, it pretty much is compact gravel impervious already. Um, this would just allow us to uh, let the rainwater uh, sheet off instead of, uh, instead of uh, having it um, in one place. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, we do propose a cell fence between this, the, uh, the septic system and the house, and that's just to keep everything from going over the lawn towards the house. Um, all the, um, if you look at the notes up there on the left side of the property, um, we do propose that the street remain clean uh, and swept every day. Uh, we're gonna provide silt sacks and all the catch basins uh, around the area. Um, and it's, it's really going to be a construction site that's off the road uh, and not towards the wetlands. Good. You there, Frank? Sorry. Penny? No, it looks good to me. Um, no, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Uh, Richard? I agree. I don't particularly have any questions right now. Brendan? Hey, no questions. OK. Uh, I'm sorry, Amy? Uh, yeah, so I have a couple of notes jotted down. Um, we use mulch stock instead of straw wattle, it's water resources protection area. So the zoning bylaw for a paved driveway, it's 2,500 square feet you need treatment. So it looks like you're providing it. The upgrade, I'm not sure if it has Board of Health approval at this point, but clearly if Title V, we want a Title V compliant system in the water resource protection district. Um, DEP had no comments. Those are my comments, thanks. Okay. Anybody in the audience? Seeing none, Frank. Looks good to me. Couldn't put it any further from the wetlands, the leaching area, and it looks like you've adequately dealt with um, the paving with the uh, 
infiltration trench. So I would uh, look for a motion. Make a motion to close. It's Penny, do I have a second? Second that. That's Thank you, Brendan. Brendan, all in favor, You're Richard? Welcome, Penny. Yes. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> and Frank, yes. Great. That was the easiest one tonight. Thanks for that. Well, thank, thank you. you. All right. Have a good night, guys. You, you too. too. You too. Poor guy. Um, sit through. How about, what are we at? Number two, Rebecca, Rebecca Road. Road. Yeah. yeah. Um, no one. Can we take a two minute break? We can take sure. a two minute You guys can chat for a second. Yeah. Chat away. Yep. Yep. All right, we're almost back, folks. Sorry about that. Thank you. All right, number two, Rebecca Road. On November 11th, 20, yeah. On November 21st, 2022, at 6 p.m., the Town Hall, Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700, Town of Central Code of Bylaws, regarding the application of Paul Terrell for work related to raise and rebuild a single family dwelling location to Rebecca Road, situated about as another interested parties are invited to attend. Information to access the virtual meetings available on the agenda post on the website. So we have Jed Hannon on. Yes, good evening. Good evening, Jed. 
Okay, great. Good evening, Commission members. Jed Hannon with Atlantic Coast Engineering. Uh, this is to Rebecca Road, which is right at the intersection of Rebecca Road and Lighthouse Road. Uh, it's located in the FEMA AE 15 zone. Um, the resource areas we have here is land stuff subject to coastal storm flowage. Uh, we're within 100 feet of the buffer zone to barrier beach. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, the existing structure is already raised um, on concrete pilings. However, it's not uh, FEMA compliant as of now. Uh, the finished floor elevation is 13.6. Um, again, it's AE15. We're proposing to uh, bring it up to elevation 17. The, the house itself is uh, almost 100 years old. We were in it a couple months ago with the owner. It's pretty pretty musty and um, fairly dilapidated, uh, especially on the second level. Um, so although it was elevated uh, several years ago, the existing structure itself is in, in pretty tough shape. So the owners want to um, essentially remove the existing house, keep the, the pilings um, that are there as best we can that appear to be in good structural shape. And then in similar projects like we've done in the past, utilize uh, structural steel pile sleeves. Um, we're also gonna need to install three new piles. That's included and shown on the WPA3 form um, in order to capture some of the loading. The, the architect that the owner's using on this is, is Ken Teriyaki. I'd be happy to you know, pull those plans up if you'd like. Um, so in, in terms of sequence of work, as I mentioned, it'd be demo the existing house um, down to the existing pilings, put in new pile sleeves along with new piles, along with installation of three new pilings, um, you know, build, build the framing, uh, install the new home, which is actually gonna be four sections of, of prefab modular. Um, and then there's, there's deck finishes associated with the project as well. Um, that's pretty much the summary, fairly straightforward. Um, I'd be happy to open up to any questions you may have. Thank you. Thanks, Jed. Amy, do you want to start? Sure. J Jed, I don't, we didn't seem to get any structural plans with this filing. So the, I know the pile sleeve detailed was included. Um, you know, for the pile extensions. Um, I know Biviano, the builders waiting on the um, modular company for the um, for the loads, but we we know we have enough uh, pilings, and it's just a matter of um, you know getting the modular drawings from the modular company so that we can you know get get all the framing detailed. We also have to go to zoning because this is a pre-existing non-conforming lot. Um, so we're, we're hoping to have the modular drawings in the next couple of months. And then of course, prior to issuance of a building permit, we'll have all the drawings that are required. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, all right. Well, so on, on this site, th this is, uh, Barrier Beach and Coastal Dune and land subject to coastal storm flowage. So a raised rebuild in this location, according to my matrix here, would say that it would be open pilings without footings, low yes. floor at or above BFE with an order of conditions. So yes. that would be what my suggestion would be is, is actually probably driven wooden pilings in this location. I mean, I'm glad to hear that he wants to go up to 17 feet, especially in, in light of the fact that in 25 years, I mean, with climate change and all this, this location is going to under a regular high tide cycle will be under a couple feet of water. 
every right not a king tide but a regular high tide this is sub, you know going to be underwater so um you know especially if it's going to be it's going to last it's going to it should it should be up for sure um and this is just in that area where, where that should be like that but um yeah so but I, I do think this is something that the commission can condition um about all i have okay Thank you. um Brendan. I don't have a question. Okay. Um, Penny. No, I'm fine with it, Frank. Okay. Um, Richard. Are the, um, are the porches, I, I'm, I'm certain they're up. I'm not worried about that, but are they going to be uh, solid where they would be holding water or are they going to be uh, drainage off of the porches themselves? That's one question. And the other question, Jed, is there's a little corner there sticking out. Is that going to, it looks to me that extends out beyond the property line, unless I'm reading it incorrectly. Two feet. On the porch, over two feet there, Frank? Yep, yep. right there. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Good, so, yes. Yes. Good question. Um, so we are aware of that. Um, and as I mentioned, it's, you know, the house and the lots pre existing non conforming. Um, it does slightly um, stick over the property line, um, which, of course, you know, we weren't aware of until we. Um, did the survey on the project. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if that's going to be an issue, I mean, we, we are overall the pervious to impervious is, is being reduced. Um, we're doing our best to, uh, keep it within the same footprint, which is largely what we're doing. Um, if that's one issue that we need to, uh, address and I would imagine zoning is probably going to bring the same thing up. You yeah. can see in the bottom right corner, it says over two feet. So we're acknowledging it. Um, and so, you know, if that's an issue, we can certainly address that with the architect and the owner to to pull that back. Okay, the other part of my question, and, and it's more curiosity than anything, are the decks going to be solid? Uh, the, the porch is a better way to put it. Is that going to be solid? And if so, how is it going to be drained off? Um, or is it going to be like, you know, slats or boards where drainage would be natural and just go through. Sure. So uh, the proposed porch, I'm looking at Ken Teriyaki's drawings now, the proposed porch would be covered um, on the front side. Oh, covered. And there'd be spacing between deck members so that, you know, if there's wind, wind driven rain, um, it would go through the deck members and then recharge into the aquifer. Okay. Thank you. Answered my question. Sure. Okay. Um, anybody in the audience? Have anybody interested in that? I okay. don't see anybody raising their hand. All right, Jed. Um, just a couple of things. I'm. It's a little hard to see with the pictures, but it looks to me like maybe what's underneath this house right now is sauna tubes. These were maybe poured in place, not driven or or anything. Um, I don't know how they could be if the house was there. So someone must have gone underneath and, and dug down and, and poured sauna tubes and then used some kind of metal clips to attach them to the structure. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's exactly the case, Frank. Um, there's, a, there's a hatch in the back. We looked under there. Um, and I actually have pictures I could pull up if you want, but that, that's exactly what it is. It's, uh, they're, they're concrete pilings. Um, I, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call them pilings. They're, they're really footings. Um, well, I, I mean, can show you pictures. They're, 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 they're circular concrete. I, I, uh, I can see those, but in my interpretation, yeah. those are sauna tubes, which meant somebody dug down and poured a sauna tube, probably with a base or something, um, which, you know, it was probably acceptable at the time for doing this. But I think to mm -hmm. Amy's point, if this is going to yeah. be a new dwelling, I'm not sure that those are compliant 
to be able to extend. Like it's probably more of a question for the building inspector, but yeah, I, I'm not sure that those um, that extending that type of of support. You know, if that was a driven pier and we said, well, geez, now the house has got to go up two feet, you could certainly take those clamps and extend that that piling and, and there's methods for doing that so you didn't have to redrive all your pilings. But yeah, I'm not sure that that's the case under this house is, is my point. Understood. Yeah. So, you know, we obviously weren't there when the original house was built. Um, well, these aren't original to that house because that house was probably put on cedar posts or something when it was built. So at some point, well, when I sure when I say original, when I I'm referring to the last update, so yep, yep. when it was last raised. So wh whether there were sauna tubes or you know poured in place or, or precast, I'm not sure, um, but they are they are concrete. If that comes up as an issue with the building department, we can certainly address it and if there's any modifications that need to be made um and we need to amend the order conditions we'll certainly you know well i guess i'm not sure you that I'm, back before you yeah i'm not sure we can condition that detail with the with the um extension i guess is my concern i mean i i think i'm just wondering what else we need to add to our orders um, if this house is going to get demolished, are we concerned about any kind of erosion control? Um, on, gonna... Frank, on this one, I think it's since it's clearly the resource areas that it is, we yep. can condition driven wooden piles since it's a total knockdown. I mean, it's one thing if it was an elevate and they didn't have an option to get in there with a machine, but this is <laughs> a demo, you know? Right. Well, I, I mean, I'm happy to I'm happy to ask the building inspector, but well, I'm I mean, emailing them as we speak. OK, so I guess what I'm not seeing here is there's a house that's getting demolished and then there's going to be some earthwork in, in terms of cleaning up some of this stuff. So do we have any erosion control on this plan? Um, let me just go to the plan here. Yeah, so bottom left corner, uh, we have a mulch sock detail. Um, so obviously that'll go around the perimeter of the property to take care of any, you know, stormwater runoff concerns. So that'll run parallel to the edge of the property line all the way around. Great. It will be replaced, you know, at the end and of each day and obviously before any storm, if there's any issues. Okay. And are there any driveways or walkways or, or anything? Uh -huh. uh, to be brutally honest it's this is such a tight area um there's literally a three-quarter inch stone parking area on the right side along lighthouse road just enough room to park one car and then there's there's grass right in the front where rebecca meets lighthouse road okay so, so there's, there's no at. no other um paving or anything like that on the property no no paving no hard surface at all planned okay great um hey get out of there and then what about um skirting amy what do we are we just have some conditions about spacing and that kind of yeah, thing yeah yeah we could add the um typical condition about lattice like um we said it on the last elevate one. Well, we just kind of brought it up, just you know, lattice spacing and not composite. Yep. Um it's it's a kind of a standard condition. Okay. If 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 you wanted to add that condition, we could do that. Make sure it's on. Yep. Um, Jed, is that the, the elevation for that location is that typically 16 are you referring to the the FEMA flood elevation there yes so it's ae 15 
Okay, so then you're going up the foot higher. Uh, sub 17 is what's proposed. Oh, good. Yeah, because it's about a, a foot roughly of framing. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the houses foot. in 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 that area, well, actually of Jericho, most of those houses along there that we've raised reed that you guys have conditioned with raised reed built, it a lot of them have gone on piles. Yeah. Wooden piles, yeah. Okay. All right. Um I think that's it, all it I have. It would be good to have the structural. So, Jed, I can email you about that if you want. Sure. Yeah. Um, again, we're just waiting for the modular company, and then we can finish up the structurals. And um, if you folks would be amenable to it, um, you know, to potentially approve the orders, you know, subject to receipt of those. Um, and again, we have to go through zoning, um, and of course, the building department prior to issuance. Okay. Do, you, do you want us to close this before you go through zoning or do you have do you think there's going to be any other changes that are going to be significant there's, there's no other plan changes um like i said we have the architecturals um so it would be it would be helpful if we could try to get this you know approved and, and to try to move ahead with zoning okay all right um amy you want to if there's nothing else, I'll take a motion. Make a motion to close. Okay, With that's the from conditions Pip. spoken about. Um, okay, I'll do I have a it. second from Richard? All in favor, Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. Great, thanks, Jed. Thank you. All right, and now we have 46 Townway Extension. On um, November 21st, 2022, 6 p.m., the Town Hall Central Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing on the Chapter 131, Section 4 of the Massachusetts General Laws and Section 30700 Town Code of Bylaws. Again, the application of Sarah Moran, uh, Warren, rather, for work related to repairing piles at a single family dwelling at location 46 Town Way Extension situate about as another interested parties are invited to attend. Information access the virtual meetings available on the agenda post on the website. And we got Jed again. Good evening, Jed Hannon again, Atlantic Coast Engineering. Um, this particular project location, it's 46 Town Way, it's literally right on Peggy Beach. It's the FEMA VE-17 zone. Um, interestingly enough, the, the existing pilings that support the home and the repair work fall kind of right in between the, the mean low water and mean high water, which you can see on the, the uh, site plan. Um, the scope of work that's proposed here is um, to have nine piles essentially repaired and sleeved. Um, so we, the owners had Rivermore um, basically do an inspection and, you know, a little bit of sounding and, and analysis on the existing pilings. And so there'll be some minor um, demo work on, on the pilings. Um, and then basically, um, steel sleeves installed along with a, a Sika grout. Um, so really it's kind of a jacketing system to, to bolster up the existing pilings that are, you know, fairly, fairly worn and uh, they need to be, um, you know, modified and, and strengthened. So the, there's two separate details on the drawing you'll see. There's six dark black, which indicates a significant amount of pile repair work that needs to be done. And then the lighter gray is, is less significant. And there's a separate detail on the other drawing for that. Um, so the, the work would be title dependent. Um, and so I, I guess I'd recommend that, you know, it'd be conditioned as such that, you know, work should take place as in the maximum windows around low tide um, or mean low water um, at high tide most of these are, are, are covered. Um, so it's, it's gonna be somewhat inefficient work, but obviously it's essential to the structure and the integrity of the, the house and foundation system. So um, 
that's pretty much the summary of the scope of work. Uh, I guess we'll open up to any questions you have. Thank you. Amy? Yeah, so, I mean, this is an interesting one, right? Um, so, so Jed, is, is this house under order by the building commissioner to have this done? This work done? Great question. I don't know the answer to that. Um, I could find out from the owner. I mean, uh, I just, I had heard some chatter about that. So that's why I ask. Um, okay. Is, is it, you're not changing the elevation of the house, right? Correct. No change to elevation, just um, strengthening the existing piles, given the, in the pile. condition of some of them, not all of them, but nine of them. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so I was talking to a colleague about the project and um, well, I mean, so there's not really any work in the ground on this so that all the work is above the ground. Cause you're, you know, if, if you put the slide up, Jen, that just shows the, the pile. And so exactly. There, there's no excavation planned. It's just uh, sleeving you know, bringing the materials down there. Yeah, so this work. is like the inexpensive route to getting a to reinforcing a pile that's been weakened by the mother nature and the forces of time, right? That's right. So it's corroded and and so this is a, a way you can do it. Um I, I mean it's not gonna last forever, but it'll be a temporary fix, might give them a few more years. Um I don't know, the work that's in the water zone so the, the the work that's you know that, that that's in 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 the in the waterway you're, you're going to need to check with chapter 91 as to whether or not a license is needed from them um on how to proceed there so we can condition that that you can just check with them and, and see what you need um you know and, and perhaps they'll have the same opinion that if you're not working in the ground that you know, maybe there's like some kind of a um, minor permit that you qualify for without a full 91 license. Um, but I don't see why we can't condition this probably as is since there's no permanent alteration to the beach. It's just a temporary, you're gonna be going out there and working just to repair these, these um, timbers. So that's... And DEP had had no comment. That's okay. What I got. Okay. Um, Richard, I don't really have any questions. I find the whole thing totally fascinating, but I don't really have any questions. Um. Okay. Um. Brendan. Yeah, I, I agree with Richard. I'm fascinated, but I have no questions. How about Penny? Are you fascinated too? <laughs> hey, whatever gets the job done. No, I'm fine with it, Frank. Um, okay. Uh, do we have anybody in the audience? It appears we do not. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming that they might have to do a little bit of excavating at the time you do this, because sometimes the sand can shift in and out and whatnot. So you, you clean up around these and basically put that sleeve on um, on the pot that's damaged and then fill it with some sort of grout or epoxy. It doesn't seem like it's very, um, um, there's minimal disturbance. Yeah. Exactly. It just, it just seems like they're just going to clean up around them, maybe remove a little bit of material. Um, if you have to get to where it's scoured or, or damaged, and then you put that sleeve on, and then somehow pour that grout or, or, or whatever it is. Um, and, and then you leave that jacket in place to kind of protect that. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. So I, it seems pretty minimal to me. Do you really think it's necessary to, to involve anybody else on that one, Amy? It, it's, if, yeah, I think that it's very straightforward that if you're working in the water way, you need to um, 
at least contact the state. It's pursuant to chapter 91. Okay. I mean, I, I think a quick email to Brendan Mullaney at Waterways should be able to flush it out as to whether or not you need to do anything further. Okay. Okay. But I'll, I can just put it, you know, just a standard condition. That's all. Okay. All right. Make a motion. Okay, Penny's got a motion. We didn't have anybody close. in the audience, right? No, we didn't. No. Okay. To close. Penny's motion to close. We have a second. Second that. Second from Brendan. From Brendan. Sorry, Brendan. That's okay. You didn't, you didn't sound like Richard. I thought maybe you'd try. <laughs> um, <laughs> all in favor, Richard? Thumbs up. Frank, yes. Sorry, going into slow motion here at oh five and God, nine. Yes. Um, oh, can I can I ask a question though? So sure. on this one, is are we going to waive like the requirement for an as built on this one? I mean, uh, huh? Is going to just be a professional engineering statement that the work was done? Yeah, and a few pictures or something would be good sure. to put in the file. Okay, no um, problem. Does everybody agree with that? Yep. Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Have Thank a great you. evening. You too. You, Thank too. you too. Take care. All right. What else do we want to do in the next three minutes. minutes? Three minutes. They're all good. I get the minutes. We got, I make a motion. We accept the minutes as written for 10, 17, 10, 3, 9, 19, and 9, 12. Second. Second for Richie. We're done. <laughs> yes. Frank, That's the way yes. I feel, Frank. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. The only person looking more tired is Jen. <laughs> She's, she wants to get out of here. All right. What else? Certificate um, compliance for uh, 43 Watch Hill. Yep. Look good. So that's the Inley School. Yep. Yeah. Amy, anything you want to report? I have a lot of things I want to report, but I just don't think I have the energy to do it tonight. Sorry. All right. So I think we're going to discuss the trees later, the beach later. Um, we have to come up with a site meeting, but maybe we can, I'll try my best to answer. Yeah. So, well, I do want to, you know, tell you that we, the Hummerock stuff, I mean, most, we, we have this fourth cliff NOI that I think it's, it's probably going to be a two meeting. It, I mean, I don't think it should be more than two meetings necessarily, but it's, you know, it's, it's kind of a big deal. Um, it is a big deal. Because it's the base. And, and just so you know, they're, they're not coming in to stabilize the cliff on this project. It's a phased project. So they're coming in and it's, and it's the projects on the website. So, and, and you guys have it, but so they're just coming in with phase one, which are some interim measures that they're doing to do some stability. But so, but you, but you want to get out on that site and we want, and with Scott and he's, we want to tour it before the, the meeting if possible. And I'm also hopefully going to get stormwater engineer going on that too, because there's some, it's a stormwater review. Um, so that will be good. And then there's those other sites that we have in Hummerock as well. Right. right. Might as well try to do them all at once. Yeah. And so there's, I mean, that one um, on Julian and the, the other one on Manchester, um, you know, so we have some beach sites and then, I mean, and we might as well discuss what we think should be happening with beach policy for Hummerock because before you know it, it'll be springtime and there'll be machines up and down Hummerock Beach again, just like we don't want. So we got to try to hit that um, now, you know what I mean? Oh, and I know one more thing. I know I said I wasn't going to talk, but here I go. Um, Christmas trees. We're going to go ahead and, and do that with North River, South River. Um, like we oh, did good. last year? Yeah. Yeah, good. And Brendan is um he was he was there last year so yes um <laughs> i don't know just, if he'll go this year but anyways he he's who i'm going i mean i saw him with a happy smile so i'm maybe i'll go this year too but it sounds like a good time and um what's I the know, date on that do you remember um yeah it's going to be december 17th at, 
as long as it's you know a nice day it's the weather yeah yeah and um yeah so there's a lot of fun things happening and um you probably heard that there was a big beach grass planting effort that happened a few weeks ago at Peggotty. hopefully that doesn't get knocked down with any storms this winter um so there's just lots of fun stuff happening and um yeah, we want to get the message out that you guys are doing great work and um, keep it up. So thanks. Okay. Um, anybody with any other? Thanks, Amy. Thanks for that. Um, so we'll communicate a little bit more by email. Um, anybody with another, any other important motions this evening? Yeah, I have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And I make a motion to adjourn. Okay, Sounds do I have good. a second? Second? Sure, Richard. And a third, I'm sure. Yes. <laughs> All in favor, Brendan? Yes. And Frank, yes. All have of you have a, have a nice Thanksgiving. You Take too. care. Thanks. 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 Thanks.